Hello, everyone. Hey, Tatiana, how are we doing? Hey, hello there. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really good. Really hello, good. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Okay, perfect. Yes. Yeah, no, it just it's just be nice to um connect with people on yes. on the group and just uh, you know, uh, you know, posting and stuff and sharing and yeah. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Good way to stay connected and sort of just I, I think the way it works for us too is like sort of dribbling out these little things that are in our minds or we're working on or whatever. Like that's when we come back to this group and we're like, oh yeah, we were chasing that. And it just seems to add to the synchronicity of everything that we're sharing little threads as we go and watching watching each other's works yeah yeah absolutely yeah Are you? yeah you know um i was just gonna say i mean i'll share it with the group but um after you shared what with the the measurements um with the pyramids that you did last time with orion and the and the stars and everything you remember you did the that uh, um because i because the basis work actually comes from the chakra points and the deep esoteric wisdom of like the hidden chakra points and energy systems. What I, I worked out some stuff after I, what you said and what you said correlates exactly to the next chakra points. Mm, so yeah, it was like really down to the, the measurements. Everything was like really precise. Um, and so I'll, I'll share with you more when the group's here, but, um, uh, -huh. uh I just wanted to say that like what you because you you said oh i'm not quite sure if this is exactly and then i i actually worked it out and it was like you were yeah it was like within like 0.5 of a centimeter like what you was what you were sharing was like exactly how the chakra system like the mm -hmm. the beyond beyond the seven chakra system how it works and uh so i thought that was just uh yeah so beautiful isn't it like we we, we listen to each other and then it's like sparks like even deeper uh things so yeah i just wanted to say your yeah your measurement work stuff was definitely um i think definitely like put some more stuff together like concrete for that because uh it for me it was like oh that was it's a great way to map uh the human energy system whatever mm -hmm. the, you know, the measurements that you did yes great i i advanced in the pyramid uh i put in um, and um, the uh, coffee inside of Kufu after I I show you. But my study is not about the pyramid. I start um, a little time, um, one month ago when I, I start in the group. But my, my work is about the spiral. It's, is uh, the sequence Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence, you know, mm -hmm. uh, is in 2D. I created a uh, other spiral in 3D. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like Fibonacci, but have other sequence. The sequence is the mathematician guy, is Narayama, and is very similar with the Fibonacci. Today I show this these characters similar then maybe you'll understand more about my study yeah is um is there um so is there an, a number there's a number sequence like yes one one two three five so have you done a, have you done that in um in numerology no numerology it's open sorry did you do, have you tried it with um, numerology, like the, the numbers? So um, like, you know, the sequence, uh, once you get to say, like once you get to nine, then the numbers collapse back down mm -hmm. to the digital root. So have you done, have you tried doing the sequence in numerology? Ah, numerology, um, uh, sorry. Thiago, uh, you help me please. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if it's my guess. Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, I was <laughs> so if, uh, just, but I, I, I hear you. Uh, uh, he's talking Robert, about digital root. He's talking uh, about uh, digital root. Ah, okay, yes. Yeah, I show you about the digital root. Is the numerology when you you have sum 
in the sequence, the Fibonacci or Narayama or other sequence, when you zoom the, the numbers, you have yeah. a other sequence, they repeat in 24 numbers. You understand? Uh huh. Have you, yeah, yeah. Have you, have you tried it with um, other, like up to nine uh, as well, like in the numerology or? Sorry. Um... Yeah. Uh... All, all the work of, of Tatiana is based on uh, checking the digital root that is like the 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 sum of nine, right? The 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 continuous sum of yeah. nine, which means reducing to one single digit, right? And uh, we are yeah. applying this twenty four cycle of repeating numbers of Fibonacci. We are applying that on Narayana sequence. That is the focus of Tatiana's work uh so yeah all the work yeah, yeah. it's also huh? um, using the digital root and the continuous subtraction of nine which is like the technical name of digital root we are applying into those studies as well oh that's amazing because um I, I also started to play with um like doing it up to uh, up to 13 and then repeating the numbers like 13 being like the the ceiling and then uh, like repeating and I found some really interesting trends with Fibonacci doing that as well. Um, so instead of like finishing at nine, finish at 13 and then see where, uh, you know, see, see what the number sequence looks like from that as well, because at, at 13, it seems to really be, uh, it, it, 13 obviously brings it a lot into esoteric, uh, knowledge and wisdom. And um, so, yeah, I've been playing a bit with a bit with uh, changing the digital root ceiling, um, you know, to different numbers, and then uh, you yeah, get. Yeah, we're, we're actually we're working with twenty four digits, so that's the ceiling twenty four. So every twenty four mm -hmm. numbers, all the numbers repeat forever. Mm -hmm. No, of Fibonacci sequence. That's only one pattern uh, that we. It's already known, um, but I, I, I'm I look forward forward to see what what you're talking about uh, regarding the thirteen, because I, I never heard about uh, a thirteen pattern cycle of Fibonacci. Yeah, because it's it's going back to the um, twelve plus one. So like you know the twenty four, like twenty four plus one, it's mm -hmm. like the the twenty four plus the middle. So it's like the same thing, like twelve plus one. 13 like and when i apply like uh, a lot of my work's to do with number 13 and um it's uh when i started to do the fibonacci sequence with 13 as the as the high point um it's just yeah it's just very interesting it's, a, it's like another whole choreograph of numbers so i just thought um yeah it might be quite interesting to uh to just to give it a go like changing the changing the ceiling number you know like which one you go to Interesting, yeah. Mm. Yeah, we gotta see with images. <laughs> Geometry is much better understandable with understood with images, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it sounds like when you're doing it in like volume, like like what you're doing with the Fibonacci in like three D, like in the volume, I feel like it's taken us more into like the understanding of time and like the four D. Hey guys, understanding of time. Yeah, Hello. 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 Hi. Sorry, I'm late. I'm, this is my last day before going to Egypt, and everyone's hitting me with a million questions. So, as you can imagine, so. <laughs> Are you awesome. excited? I am excited. I'm very excited. Um. Hi, Talal. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Robert. Hi. So, um, Will. Hi there. Hey, hey, like you're already in Egypt. I, I'm I'm there in spirit with you. Good on you. <laughs> so, um, wow, what what an epic app Maya is, right? Jeez, that was fun to see. I, I love seeing Alan's reaction to it. Actually, that was kind of fun because he hadn't seen any of that yet. No, it's like a really cool game, and and we spent a lot of money on building it. So it's going to be. It's basically what we've been living which is the coolest part of all, right? It's like, I took a, I did a quick video on this 
just a screen capture. So for those of you that did not see it, so it was, uh, I think I surprised him today. And I was surprised that it does work in the landscape mode, which is great. Yeah. We talked about it right after the meeting and he thinks he can get it to just shift. We can, we can change the UI. So everything just rotates and doesn't expand. Cause right now it just expands cause it's not expecting it. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything got really large, all the little logos and everything. Yeah. That's the only thing about it. But, but it's super cool. Yeah. I launched it last night in my living room. Like the music comes on, like you're in this experience. It's really, really cool. So yeah, we'll have to really get everybody is. on the, the call here, the test. Yeah, no, it, it really is. It's very cool. I recorded a video. Yeah, I have. I recorded a video. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll just do it like I, I did it. Yeah, because you, you should just click on the edit button on the top and then on the crop. Um, yeah, no, I know, but I was going back and forth, so it's gonna make you like. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. But it's okay. I'll just do it on my phone so you guys can see. Is uh, is Alan coming today? Um, he was just on the last meeting. Can you text him well and find out where he is? I'll text him. Thank you. It's impressive how high res it is. Yes, the, scan, I know, the right? scans. Whoops, okay, so I'm gonna find a, here we go. So this is the King's Chamber of the Pyramid. <laughs> wow. How cool is that, dude? So you can actually see a bunch of the stuff in this mode <clears throat> but let's see if i can point out for you guys okay so up here is an eye on the wall you can see it like an eye of Ra. right so then you kind of draw and trace it to find it i'm drawing it with this laser right here is that There's a right eye robert yes it is there's mm -hmm. also an alien head right here there's an eye right here where the laser beam is I'm trying to point it out and the we mouth that one in there too right here and then there's another large eye right here you guys see that mm -hmm. yeah. see the alien head Okay, so there's an alien head. It's got the weird like nose right here too. And there's an eye of Ra right here. There's actually even a nose bridge and and there's another eye right where the laser is up here. And it looks like a king with a crown. You, there's one of the prongs of the crown right here. And then right next to it, there's a crown all the way around. There's another eye here as well. And it's um, there's a whole face on that wall. But if we look over on this side, and I'm going to have to like try to move back a bit. There we go. Okay, there's a bull right here. And you can pull up that little tab thing and show the, the hint yep. if you want to as well. So we built this little panel so that we can give easy hints for everybody to see just what's what's there to be found and then drawing. It's all it's all beta for just a demo in Egypt, but super cool to be able to see it. Yeah. And Jamie, I heard you mention the textures. We've actually built these at 4K and 8K. So within the back end, we can swip. Like if you're at a certain point, we can show you the 8K or the 4K, depending on where you are in the room. It's it's really cool how it all worked out. And then there's a uh, a big large eagle there, right here. And I think it was like this, and Artemis shooting an arrow at it on the wall right here. 
up at this. So these are all ancient petroglyphs that are telling the story of Osiris and Orion killed by Artemis. And then if you go, let's see. So that's uh that's in the deacons as well, right? So there's a uh, Sagitta killing the eagle. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. It's uh Satet in Egypt. Satet is Artemis. And then also there's a there's an eye on so when you lay down on the sarcophagus, your head goes here. This is like a third eye. There's actually two eyes, they just didn't make them yet, on both sides of the sarcophagus as well. And so you can kind of see it and if i turn on the i've got a little light flashlight too right you can kind of see this it's not that great from this angle let's see if i can whoops dang it that wasn't supposed to happen okay there we go okay now you can kind of see the eye shape right here you see this right there So I need to help them like Yeah, we gotta pull out that left side of it there. Yeah, it's missing the whole left side of the eye. It goes all the yeah. way out to here. You see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are these light etchings on all of the walls in the Great Pyramid. And uh and so they're still there. It's just you have to be able to really you have to be able to see it. And a lot of people just can't see that stuff. There's another one here too. You see this thing where the laser pointer is? It looks like hair almost on top of a skull. So everything on this wall inside the king's chamber is like an ocean scene. And if we come really close, let's see if we can, I can show you this. Okay, here's a sailfish. You see the, this is the, sharp like long beak of a sailfish and then here's the bottom part of the mouth then it goes like this and then here's the sail right here and you can see the lines going up on the sailfish here's the eye of the sailfish right here you see this coming down like this and then here's the tail looks like a shark tail almost comes down like this and then i'm just tracing its body here's the eye so here's the sail all right, the top of the dorsal fin, and then here's its back. Can you see that? I can see the the mouth opening, but on Zoom, it seems to just be doing some compression crawlings. On yeah, it. it's compressing it. But that's okay. There's the eye right here. You see the eye? Right where the laser is pointing. There's like a dark. Yeah, that side. dark switch. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it is compressing it. It's not. It's not as clear as it is on my screen because of the Zoom compression. Yeah, for sure. But there's a there's a sailfish fin right here and then the body of the fish goes just like this up to its mouth on both sides like this and then there's a like a shark fin tail that goes up like this and down like this so all the stuff on this wall is like an ocean scene Let's see what else i can show you guys it sounds like uh it sounds like the 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 deacons robert are actually inscribed on the wall because the so far you've got the you know sagitta the eagle you know the fish it could be formal halt the southern fish um and also the sail obviously the boat scene noah's ark you've got uh the actual sail of the argus navis uh as well so i wonder if uh if you labeled you could probably label all the deacons of the of the wheel on the walls you probably could and also um you know this is matching the last supper if you look at the last supper painting the left wall is very dark it's a feminine dark mm -hmm. and water and in, in fact if you look here i wish i had a better way to to manipulate this thing this is like a skull right here right here then this is like looks like clown hair on a skull almost like a like a ghoul or something it's very dark this whole wall represents like death and there's an eye right here another eye right here and there's like it's got this weird part down the center of its head right here for me this stuff is like 
super crazy clear. And you can also see like DNA. So you can see this thing, watch my laser go like this, up to here, it makes like an X shape all the way across. And then on the other side, it comes down like this. <laughs> it's like a chromosome. You guys see that right here in the center is the crossover point. And then when we look at the other wall, whoops, uh oh, what happened there? Uh, oh, I went too far. How do I go back? Whoops, I got to stay in the room here. Okay, there we go. All right. So you can see there's the apis bull here. So we can take that away. It's got, this is actually the Orion symbol right here where there's an inverted, there's a diamond shape here. Let's see if I can come closer. Oops, too far. Okay, so there's a diamond shape here and then an inverted diamond here that's dark, but it's actually the shape of the Orion constellation. And here's the bull's horns right here. And this is an apis bull. So this is the first leg, the other leg, and then the back hind quarter of the bull is here. And then there's a Hathor with two horns right here around it. Here's the other horn. Here's the face. Here's the eye of the mother right here, looking, kind of looking at us. Here's the neck. You can see the bowl of the neck. And then the front quarter is right here. And that cow goes from here all the way over to here. And then you can see also how her hoofs come all the way down to here on both sides. But above it, there's something else. It looks like something else. I thought this was writing before, but it's not really writing. It's like a whole DNA. There's dragons that attach to a tree over here. And the dragon goes like this. You can kind of see it where one side goes like this and then up and then down again and then up. It's basically like a Kundalini across the entire wall. And then in between the dragons, there's like DNA nucleotide pairs. So you can see it here too. So it goes up like this on one side. And then the that's other the part that almost looks like text this. characters is those connections. And the connections in between is like nucleotide pairs. Yeah. Right. Can you guys see that? And then above yeah. it is this bird, but there's another bird next to it. Oops. Okay. There's another bird. The bird goes like it's harder to see on this. Here's the body of it. It's a larger body. And then the bird has a beak, but you can't see it real well in this picture. We've got other pictures, but its wing goes all the way around it like this. So it's a much larger bird. It's a, a shape of a Bennu bird. And then here's the other wing right here. See this dark thing coming across here. So it's a very large bird. So these are about 13 feet wide. So if we take away that, there, you can kind of see it, right? Trace the wing. He then discovered this one. And then here's the tail right here. And then here's the other bird. Here's the eye of the other bird. And the beak is right on that seam right here. So it's like telling the story. Sorry, go ahead. 
I was going to say it's super interesting and, and we can almost sort of predict potentially what else is there it, because of if it's following the deacons because obviously the summer triangle um is known as the three birds or the three birds of Rhiannon and so that's you've got Aquila Cygnus and you would have Lyra uh was classed as a bird as well so if you've got two birds there then we could pretty much predict that there'd be a third bird well the third bird this is the Aquila right here this is the Aquila, the, the Thunderbird. Yeah, so if we've got Aquila there, there must be Cygnus, the sec that second bird, and then it must be Lyra. Lyra must be somewhere close because that's the Summer Triangle. Yeah. So we can almost sort of start to predict like and know what we're actually looking for if it follows yeah. uh, follows suit. Um, so it'd either be obviously an actual harp or it could potentially be a, another bird, but it, it it looks like if there's two, then there'll probably be three. Yeah. And so look, super, super cool. What about dragons in the decans? Yeah, you've got Draco, obviously. And uh, and obviously sometimes Hydra as well is like classed as a second dragon, which is like opposite. But um, there's a Hydra in the Menkari pyramid. Interesting. Yeah, so you normally have like the two dragons, uh, the battle of the dragons, the red and the white um but yeah draco for sure so draco's right next to sagitta so that uh that artemis the arrow that you had like yeah that means that draco would be right next to it somewhere okay. so this is really cool because you could pretty much predict like kind of where you can find these inscriptions oh that's awesome yeah and by the no. way right underneath uh satet or or artemis yeah is uh is the the word thoth it's written on the wall yeah, it's right on the foot of that horse, I think. It is. It's right here. It says yeah. one, two, six, Thoth. You can't see it well on this Zoom. <laughs> one, two, six, two, one, six. <laughs> Try and yeah. push in, Robert, with the little the little person icon control thing and see if you can push in closer to the wall. And maybe just tilt up. Yeah. No, maybe not. On Zoom, it's tough. It, it's compressing it for the rest of us out here. But Yeah, it really is. Um, let's see here. Killer little tool to have. I right mean, here. We, we've always talked right about here. building you this thing. The writing, you can see the writing. It's right here. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Oh, pretty well. Mm -hmm. Right. It's it's like, oops. It's cool that we have this though. It's like yeah. it's so cool, man. <laughs> okay, look there it is. Look, 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 look. T. H. O. T. H. <laughs> Yeah, I thought we could see it. Good job. All right. Epic. Also, the, the alpha should be on the rim there, Robert. I think you just have to turn your flashlight on. Oh, the alpha's on the rim? It should be, yeah. Cause I, I was I didn't say anything in the meeting because I thought maybe they did a different version, but I don't see it on the um it should be there. He said you have Philly said you had to turn your oh there, that might be a good way to do it right where you're at. Looking across. Yeah, you have to turn, like you have to go on the back side and then There's no hint for it though. The There's no hint for it, no. But it it should be in there, and I think his placement is a little off. So I'm gonna I'll work with him on it. But he showed me a screenshot where he's like, "No, you can light it like this." I was like, "Okay." There, I think it's in. I think it's there. You have just the little flashlight part. There we go. Yeah, it's hard. We'll have to find a way to make sure people can find it because. It's too hard right now, even. It's just like real life. You got to get the angle just right. That... In real life, it's freaking hard, too. <laughs> Until you know how to do it. Get the angle on it. I think just I saw right. it. There, there's the A. There it is. You see it? I don't see yeah, it. I can see the crossbar of the A right where your laser is, right just above it, just above right there. So I think he's got it on there, but it's just not, you know, we're going to have to enhance it and overdo it so it can be found. Yeah, there's, that's where the alpha omega is, right here. I, I don't really see it well, though. I don't see it well, well in this either. Okay, we'll, we'll enhance. So, so, so keep telling us, Robert, about the um, this decans thing. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I've, I've got the image and we can go through it, but... Um, Let's do but it, because this is like... giving me a shing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it sounds like, um, oh, it says I can't, 
share, but uh Robert, can you unshare your your screen? Your phone, I mean. Oh, somebody might have got pulled him away. <laughs> but he's got the screen <laughs> share. Oh, there he's back there. Hey Robert, can you unshare your phone screen? And yeah, yeah. Robert I can Robert can do the Robert and the Robert and the Robert. Uh you can call me Rob. That'd be easier. And then Robert's Robert. Okay. Deal. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. There we um, go. So you're you're so, Robert. You're both Robert and me. <laughs> Let me go to ah, okay, yeah. So this is this is my this is my holy grail. <laughs> so this will tell you everything, right? So um as you can yeah, see, I remember so you, this. Mm -hmm. yeah, you got awesome. so you got the 72. The lost octave the 72 on the outside and then you've got the original 64 on the inside so you can kind of see the overlap and like where uh -huh. it's like differs but like what you were pointing out like see you got aquila and sagitta like next to each other so that would indicate that that part of the story is capricorn right and then um like i said you've got the three birds which is cygnus which is aquarius which is literally what we're going into as the first deacon of aquarius uh, Aquila the eagle and then Lyra was classified as a bird in the in the Hercules story um the three birds um uh -huh. the the uh the Steph I think it's the seventh labor when he has to basically vanquish these sort of demonic birds and it's connected to the three birds um of the Merlin story of the three birds of Rhiannon which is the summer triangle so that's what I think is super cool is like we looking at when you find one or two it's like almost like you can kind of almost predict like yeah. what else should yeah. be there, um, which gives us such a huge key because we actually know what we're meant to be looking for. And, uh, and of course, you've got Draco right there. So, uh, you know, and, and Draco obviously was one of the pole stars and Thuban obviously pointing, uh, connected to the pyramids, right, as one of the ancient pole stars. Um, and that's really where you get the Merlin energy as well, like why Merlin was the wizard of dragons was because it, at the, in the Iron Age, Draco was the pole star. So the reason why Merlin's connected to dragons is because it, Draco was the pole star at the time, uh, at the time of King Arthur and, and all of that. So again, it's like we can really start to trace back like which what was the pole star when these pyramids were built. And then we can start to see like which walls are connected to which story and which astrological uh astrological sign um exactly so, yeah and so obviously you got taurus so, you got orion. well you got orion orion was right on top of the apis yeah so yeah and obviously you got iridanus which that could even look like a dragon because obviously that's the nile it's a nile and it's also the jordan river it's kind of like both so that could potentially look like a dragon right uh if it's uh -huh. close so I think there's a few little overlaps and obviously you've got Hydra, um, the Hydra constellation it, that's water that's connected to, uh, Nick, to the, you said about a sail, this obviously Argo Navis being Noah's Ark. So that, that also had a sail that overlapped the whole of Leo and cancer. So yeah, I just think there's like, if we knew what we like with this, we could almost map out. Well, so wait a like okay, let's think about this for a second. So we've got the King's Chamber, we've got Orion and the Bulls, which then represent Taurus, right? Yeah. And Orion is in Taurus and Gemini. And then you've got Eridanus there. Um, yeah. The, but then there's two birds that are on top of the Bulls. So is it almost like representing that it kind of went through an octave or something? It sort of like comes back all the way around? So it's like it's almost like it starts out on the earth plane and then it yeah. goes through this cycle. This is like telling the hero's journey, right? The the whole thing to me feels like the story of Orion. And I've said this many times, just intuitively. It's like the story of Orion going through his life, death, and resurrection cycles. And, yeah. and that everything in the room is facing west because west represents the end and death i mean in egypt they didn't say you die they said you're westing and it's also right? the water as you said about the water being that wall of like of the ocean 
So yeah, the, so you've got one side that's Earth. The side with the, you know, with the Taurus is Earth, which that's a fixed sign of Earth, right? Yeah. And then you've got the opposite wall, which is water and ocean, mm -hmm. right? Fixed and, water. And so that would be the the Scorpio side, right? And then yeah. you've got the the other wall. So you would think that this is going to be tied to then the fixed sign somehow. Yeah, which would make sense because obviously Cygnus or Pegasus. Uh, so it must you know, be Pegasus and Cygnus are those. I'm, I'm trying to think what the hell. The wings. So you're saying the west is the west wall, the Taurus? That's the north wall. The, oh, the north, north wall is where Orion is, yeah. Okay. And then the south. So is the south wall Scorpio? The south wall would be, I guess, Scorpio. That'd be the, the fixed sign of water. Yeah. Right? So then, so then really... We just need to establish which one has the wings. Yeah. Uh, so then on the other, so then the the west wall, right? The west wall would be the um, hydra. Yep. Right. So that's the one behind the sarcophagus is the west wall. So you got uh -huh. Corvus, Crater, and Hydra, yep. and that's in Leo. Yeah. So Leo also has the king on the wall. And Leo always makes me think of a king somehow as well. It's like yeah. the sun, the sun sets in the west. Mm -hmm. And Leo is the sun. Yeah. yeah. Aligned, the king of the jungle. But, yeah. Well, that's the alchemical journey, right? Because it starts in Virgo. So the mystery school starts in Virgo. And then she births the Christ child in this winter solstice. And then he becomes the lamb of God in Aries. And then he becomes the king, the king of kings back in Leo. So you start in Virgo and you go all the way around and then you hit the Christ, you become the Christ King in Leo. So that makes total sense. Um, and one thing I, th I thought that you said about the hair, right? You said it looked like hair on the wall. Like, yeah, it is. It? It's like hair on the, on the, on the Artemis. That's like Which shooting is, the arrow at the, at the Aquila. Cause Coma Berenice, um, that's the hair. That's the goddess hair constellation. You also said, Robert, the hair was on the the wall, the death scene wall. Like on yeah, the on the death scene wall. wall. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So it could be Which there too. This side, right? Yeah. yeah, it's on that side. It would, it would be on that side, yeah. Because this. Oh my this, gosh, this is exactly oh, what this is. Rob, Rob, Holy say again shing. what that was. Say again what Coma Berenices. Yeah. Was. So the so the star law of Coma Berenices um, is basically like um, I think it's. I can't remember which warrior. It might have been Hercules. I'm not sure, Ooh, but basically, damn. Um, <laughs> he went to her. Basically, her her beloved went to battle, and for her for his safe return, the goddess, um, the the queen. I can't remember exactly, but she's a queen. She might be the queen of Egypt. Actually, she actually gave her hair as sacrifice to make sure that the that her beloved would actually come back from the battle. Wow. Okay. And so in the constellation, it's known as the golden hair or the golden braid, which is linked to the DNA, like on the, um, the DNA, uh, ponytail, which is the Bindu chakra and braids. And that's why the, the ancients and the Scandinavians would braid their hair because it's the DNA and it's, it's the spine, the weaving of the energy of the golden braid. So it's one of the mystery teachings but yeah you've got the sacrifice of the hair right on the part where the hydra covers because the hydra covers from about gemini all the way to about leo here ish so it's huge the hydra um uh, which is like the water dragon so you've got the water dragon this side and then you've got Draco, oh and you know what that's what i side, saw that um uh, on the on the on the water side i told you i saw like a um it looks like a chromosome but it's like two snakes crossing over each other to form the chromosome as the X, and that would literally be the serpents. Oh wow! Yeah, well that's and Scorpio and and Ophiuchus, right? This is Ophiuchus. I'm getting like this super shing, yeah. and then um, so all of this stuff then is all over the walls. Holy shit! We can literally map the whole. Oh, and beacons. here's the Aquila right here, which is on the other wall. Yeah. Fuck. We have Sagittarius there, right? And so I don't know if you can see this, but what I did as well was in here. I don't know if I can zoom. Yeah, I can. Uh, I actually marked out the um, the fractal parts as well of like the Hellenistic 
connections and the exhortations. So we can even start to see like where the, the, the microcosm of that whole deacon is as well. So that, that could be super interesting to, to, oh, for us to find. And um, <laughs> I'll say with this one, this one thing, you know, you said about Thoth being written on the wall. Well, you're not going to believe this. I literally just did the maths of the, the, the mathematics of the letters. And when you add up Thoth in the alphabet, it comes to gate 71. It adds up to 71, which is all Fiochus. Right? Yeah. So if you, if you take T-H-O-T-H and you add it, the numbers of it all, Thoth creates the number 71, which is which 71 or Fiochus. Interesting. So even, those, even the name Thoth is basically telling us Thoth is Ophiuchus, essentially. Yes, Thoth is Ophiuchus. I 100% agree with that. So, it's it's basically yeah, when Orion it's, gets it's, control of his serpents and, and gets hmm. control of his Kundalini, he becomes the wisdom of Thoth. Yeah. And, and obviously serpents is rising up to reach the crown, and the crown as we know is the crown is like you said you found it in leo so it's the becoming the king right so once he but what i think is funny is like yeah like obviously not the letter 20 h is 8 o is 15 so and obviously you've got the 20 and 8 again so you've got 28 28 and 15 so which is interesting you've got 28 obviously the the moon cycle so you've got 28 28 and 15 when you add them together you get 71 so which is right slap bang in gate one the original start of the I Ching and 71, which is the higher octave. So it's like Thoth is literally telling us like the maths is it's right there. Did you guys see what Google released yesterday? The new AI? No. It blows chat GPT four out of the water. There's you guys got to see this. They did a presentation and they showed this thing at work and you like, point your phone at your hands or it's a video of somebody's hands and and they're doing shit like what's this and the ai goes oh yeah you're making a bird it does stuff where you have to be a human looking at it to see it's not a chat thing and what did they call this next level ai you can't believe it it's called gemini i was like Oh, wow. Almost wanted to say something during the Crown Sterling meeting today, but I knew it was a little tangential. But for this meeting, like the thing's called Gemini and Orion is coming out. Like you couldn't be more in alignment. Like Google just blew chat GPT out of the water. I was like, oh, that's what AI is going to be like. Sam Altman keeps saying people are going to look back and be like, isn't it cute how chat GPT four is this early iteration of AI. And I'm like, Oh my God, early iteration. That thing's amazing. And then they show this AI being able to look because what they did is they didn't train it on words and then on images and then on video, they trained it on all of them at the same time. So it can like perceive video, audio, code, and text all at the same time as input instead of being like, oh, there's this, and then there's this, and I have to compare it. I'm, I'm of course, just butchering <laughs> their technical explanation of how this works, but I watched their whole thing yesterday. It was just like, okay, then, like, you guys. What does, oh, that sounds amazing. That oh, sounds boy. totally amazing. Yeah. Google's, Google's, uh, you know, YouTube page has the full presentation. It's like, of course, they completely nailed the presentation too. It's just like, ast I was astonished. I, I mean, I was like, that is the, Google was like, hold my beer, basically. Like, I could, <laughs> and they called it Gemini. So I thought, yeah. how, well, oh my God, guys, look at this. I Holy can, shit. Yeah. I just yeah. looked, man, Robert, you nailed this, dude. I'm so glad you're on our team now. Okay. So, <laughs> so let me share real, real quick. Oh, okay. I was just going to oh, wait, say, wait, before know, we um, do this, before we do this, look where Delphinus is. It's right next to the Aquila. Yeah, okay. right next to the Aquila. Now, I was just, I was just going to say, right, just to, that Canis Major for people that don't know is Sirius, right? So yes, basically, basically they're Dark calling Star. they're calling it Sirius, and uh, and right here, this this gate thirty five forty five is uh, Sirius and Alcyon star of the Pleiades. 
So it, literally right in Gemini, you've got the two great central suns share this gate. <laughs> which is what they've just called so it's the twins right sirius and alcyon the two great central suns are sharing this gemini gate i'll tell you they know what they're doing these people <laughs> they know what they're doing this is epic oh my gosh this is like i'm like literally blown away so we had Aguila, so that would be on the east wall okay there was an Aguila there that was being shot at by a woman with a bow and arrow yeah. right riding a stag look at this and so the one next to Aquila on your Decans thing yeah. is Delphinus. Mm -hmm. There's the Aquila. There's Delphinus. Oh, wow. She's got the bow and arrow. Fuck. Oh, wow. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And you, and you know the Delphinus, what it represents, right? No, what? It's, um, it's a representation of the, of, two things either the it's the male sperm that swims up into uh from the capricorn so once the christ oil is born within the human then it swims up the cerebral spine to then be uh become obviously christed so delphinus is basically the dolphin it's the sperm swimming up the spine or the sacred secretion that swims up the spinal fluid to then become the chrism, the sacred chrism into the third eye, which is happens uh, at Taurus, where it where it then uh, the bull is sacrificed at the at the cross, and then it basically goes into the brain, and then you get illumination as the king in Leo. So that's the star story. Wow, guys, of, this of is Delphi. this is this is really nuts. I'm really blown away right now. <laughs> because right before we go to Egypt, we start cracking this thing. What the hell? Okay, so here, this is the west wall. There is an eye of Ra right on the wall right there. You can see it right there. Same place that it's on the Last Supper painting as well. And then now we're going to look at the, the wall with Delphinus. So there's Orion, right? There's Orion. And you can see here, there's another line. Whoops. You can see a line that's etched right here as well for the inverted, inverted diamond shape on both sides that represent Orion. So then the three belt stars would be across here. And that's the Apis bull, which makes total sense. But this one is sort of blacked out. The one underneath it is blacked out. There's also writing on this heart. That's the diamond shape, which is not a little strange that that also matched my logo that I had before we ever discovered this. Okay, obviously weird. But so Dolores Cannon predicted that. So this is Delphinus and this is Aquila. And it's matching this. What the fuck? It's amazing. We're yeah. cracking this thing, guys. Holy and shit. That would make sense because that means that then on the north, well, northeast is basically Aquarius. So the northeast wall would be uh, Pegasus and formal halt, the uh, southern fish. Yeah, so, so we Aquarius, can so we should be, really... be able to match the whole room now. Yeah. To yeah. the whole astrology, it's it's basically all of the the constellations, the major constellations. So the west wall, right? So then this would be. Taurus, this would be Aries, Taurus, and and then towards the right, Gemini, right? And then you get to Delphinus. What month is this now? What month Delphinus, is Delphinus in? Uh, it's Capricorn, so it's going to be December, Jan. December, January. So so then uh, is this going backwards then? It's going through the procession. Oh, wow. It's going backwards? Let's see here. Let's go back to your picture. I let me see here. I I took a screenshot of it, so I'll just grab it. Oh, you got it? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yeah, I got it. Yeah, so we're going counterclockwise, right? Because that's how it matches. Yes, the... that's right. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. So this is the way it's going. So you've got Taurus which is um, May, right? Mm -hmm. This would be June. 
I guess this would be, so this would all be Taurus. So June no, no, would be you got, like uh, the other way around no, no, right no, here, the, Gemini. Yeah, yeah. Gemini. Yeah, that's it. So it goes, so on the wall, let's go back to this. Let's see if we can see anything else on this side. So, okay. So if, if Orion is right here, right? This is Orion. Apis bull represents Osiris and Orion. So mm -hmm. then that means that Perseus is going to have to be somewhere like, I'm guessing it's going to be towards the, the right. The right. Yeah. The right. Yeah. So there's going to be something Perseus right here. Right. And then Cetus and, you, and Cassiopeia. And you know, uh, you know what Cetus is, right? What Cetus? So Cetus is the the sea monster that tried to eat uh, Andromeda, right? But it also was in the ancient times uh, was actually the fourteenth astrological sign. So it it basically uh, because it's so huge, um, they, but they, it's taken out. But it actually originally was the fourteenth. So so is this to... is this the dragon that goes all the way across the sea, the sea yeah, serpent? It could actually... Because it it's be, so it's so big, the sea yeah, serpent. Sea, I mean, this thing goes all the way from here on this yeah. side. There's like a dragon that goes all the way to the other other wall. Yes, Cetus was known as the sea monster or the um, uh, the kraken. You know, it's like it's a huge. It's like a. Some people say it's the whale, but in originally it was like the sea monster that Andromeda was sacrificed. Uh, to be eaten by obviously before perseus uh broke the chains and saved her so to speak but um yeah cetus was so big it was classified as the as the 14th the missing 14th so it must be then that um perseus would be to the right of the bull mm -hmm. right and cassiopeia would also be in the corner it would kind of be towards the corner and then you've got pisces that would be off in the corner and then aquarius would be on the next would be on the east wall and so that means cygnus would be to the left of delphinius delphinus yeah that's command yeah, so it'd be northeast yeah northeast wall yeah oh yeah go ahead which is okay funny so we could literally see you know on this where it says i've got the line there that the that white faint line uh-huh in my picture so that where it says that's the actual that is exactly where we are in like right now that is us so we're in cephas literally going into thickness so like it'd be so interesting to see exactly you mean as far as the procession on the wall you're, you're saying as far as the procession of equinox yeah yeah yeah, that's 2023 is right on that line. Mm -hmm. So it will be so interesting to see like what is on that part of the wall, like where Cephas Cygnus is like it just because that's really the the exact spot that we are in 2023. I'm sure it's so an engraving of Robert's be face. Super yeah, I think we're going to this thing's <laughs> going to unravel fast now, guys, because now we know what to look for. Yeah, the intuition is now just seeing it at where it should be. So that's much easier. Yeah. Fantastic, I mean, there's Rob. no way I could have just picked this out of my ass. I mean, seriously, how could, come on, that's so ridiculous. That means that there's stuff above, like on the left side here, probably above that's going to be related to, um, you know, this Piscus Austrian, what's, what's Piscus Austrinus? That's, um, that's one of the royal stars known as formal halt, which is the mouth of the fish. And it's drinking the water from Aquarius that's pouring down. So it's it's basically where, you know, uh, it's one of the royal stars, the four, one of the four royal stars of Persia. So it's called formal formal halt in ancient Persia. Okay. So so what about so Pegasus is a flying horse, so there should be a flying horse somewhere. Maybe it might be up down though because sometimes pegasus is upside down so but i mean the whole i mean it looks kind of looks like the uh artemis is on like it a, might be artemis horse. on the flying horse yeah because andromeda actually rides 
rides Pegasus. So it could be kind of like a combination of how it looked back then to them. I mean, you know, it's it's interesting depictions for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but Cassiopeia is like an M or a W, which is kind of like Omega, right? So it's like it would be uh, a W shape or an M, the constellation, or it'd be somebody, uh, the, the woman, the queen sitting on the throne. So like, again, we can really start to see like what we're trying to look for. And I think that would make things so much easier when you're there you're just like oh we're looking for this this and this shape like yeah you, you could pretty much map the whole th i mean it's just it looks like it's following the whole procession kind of pretty accurately so you know what this is telling us i mean okay let's assume this theory is right stargate <laughs> i like that <laughs> talal what are you thinking Well, I'm, I mean, I'm not really versed into this stuff, but I mean, the correspondence between the stuff on the wall and the, the circle here is, is very, you know, it's amazing. Um, definitely, if you went there and just looked at this other stuff, that you should be there. And if you find them, then that must be there's something really there. There's something really to this, you know, Zodiac thing on the wall then. And, and so what this says to me, first of all, there's no way it's graffiti. <laughs> no way and it it very likely has to be original to the building all mm -hmm. of it and it also implies a super incredible knowledge of the zodiac and procession of equinox yep you which i think it's set see. up as a procession of equinox once we get up into that upper chamber and you sit on that throne that you'll probably just see it all and they're like oh yeah we'll just draw this on the walls down there it's easy <laughs> the more wow. the more I look at, the more i look at that artemis on the image uh-huh yeah it, it actually looks like how uh princess andromeda is sitting on pegasus like in the stars like if you actually look at the the star constellation you can actually see andromeda sitting on pegasus and that to me that image it looks like it looks pretty similar so hmm. yeah and there's not that many women in the in the in the astrological wheel either so you know not, not any goddesses so um the fact that that image kind of looks like a you know looks similar yeah wow can we see something else up here like look at the wall now we know what we're looking for, right? Next to the Aquila, this must be overlapping. I see some kind of face right here as well. Like an There's something or right here. Do you guys see that? Yeah, it kind of looks like an eye burst or a sunburst. It's something, to... right? There's something there. There's like... something also here. What do you guys see? I see it could like be... there. It could be Capricorn. Oh, it could be like uh, the sea goat, Capricorn, right? Like. Because obviously we have we've got the deacons there, but we haven't actually seen the astrological sign. So maybe there's um that's what the overlap is is the sign for the actual Capricorn sign itself. So and what's Sagitta look like? Sagitta is just an arrow. Okay, this is the arrow then. Yeah, which is um which is the it's a lightning bolt actually. It's the lightning bolt of Zeus carried by the eagle. Well, here you uh, go. Uh, to look at the like very left on that line, uh, vertical line, I can see like a pointing shape to the left on the top, top left of the image, like a faint dark. Right here? Yeah, that, that, this is like a pointing arrow to the left. I see, like, it's the... like an almost like an eye shape. Yeah, that's where I was seeing the eye. Yeah. It's the corner of that big, because there's a circle. Yeah. Can you see the vesica shape right here? Mm -hmm. What could that be, Robert? Vesica shape. Mm. Well, you see it. You see a vesica right here. It's like almost like an eye shape, and well, like it I ends said, right here, and then it starts over here. I mean, it could be that maybe that's the formal hole. Maybe that's the fish, right? Because obviously, vesica is a fish. Yeah, yeah, it could be a fish. Yes, maybe it that could absolutely be a the, fish. Um, 
maybe so that's that... the royal star. Maybe that's uh, the Piscus Austrinus. That's the Piscus Austrinus. Which is the formal halt. Yeah, that's the Piscus yeah. Austrinus. It's it would be bit. right before the Aquila. Motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> unbelievable because it does look like a fish. You can see the yeah. gills of it right here even. Well, that's obviously what the Vesica Pisces is, right? It's the fish. So it's uh, the blad. I see the, the head of the fish right here. I see its tail right here. And I see its gills right here. Yeah, I see the tail now. Yeah, I think that's the fish right there. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Damn. You know, we're unraveling like so, so to the left, thousands of years of mystery right here. So to the left should be the sign of Aquarius, like constellation. So just on the left of that, I mean, literally Aquarius should be <laughs> right next to that on the left side of that eagle somewhere which would be really fun to see if you could actually find the <laughs> so symbol Aquarius, of Aquarius. This something. looks like the resonance frequency, right? Let me see if I can uh, go back into the app. And how epic is this? We've got that. It's either going to be three, we can see this. It's either going to be the three lines or it's gonna, actually going to be like the man pouring like a vase of water. So it could be either depending on how they drew it, right? So it, could, it even could just be the actual, uh, you know, the the chalice being poured, but somewhere it will look like water somewhere, mm -hmm. like lines of water. Jug, jug with the water coming out kind of, yeah. Mm. But that's... Okay, so I'm looking at it now. Let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to... Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and, and go back into this Zoom so you can see it from the app and we can actually go into the room. How cool is this? This is hilarious. <laughs> We'd have never been able to do this unless we're in the pyramid. It's a very cool app. Very, very cool. <laughs> and that's going to be available, is it, to download? or? Yeah, it's on the Orion app. We got to get you on Orion. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to get you on the uh, the math chat on Orion. So this is the, I, I, we created our own like uh, signal type app. That's like mm -hmm. mega, mega encrypted. No government can get into it. It's like super, Alan, you're going to freak out when you see what we just discovered. This Robert guy is unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> it's awesome. We have literally just unraveled the King's chamber. Like I've never imagined like mm -hmm. right now. Well, that's, that's why I, that's why, I, that's why I spotted him. I knew, <laughs> I knew this was the guy. Sorry, I missed the beginning. I'm, I'm literally, I was on a Zoom with, uh, with Danny Sheehan, and I had to be on with him because he just, he's got such connections with the Pope. I mean, he, he's been friends with him for his whole life, and he can just call him up and talk to him about what. So, I mean, it's something that connects to our, our work, uh, where he's, he's going to be very, very helpful. Plus, he's the guy in charge of disclosure completely. He's, he's anyway, go ahead. Show me what you've got, Robert. Have oh, I missed Alan, this is, this is so big. I can't even, I'm like, wow. I'm just okay. literally freaked out by this. Good. First, first of all, though, Alan, how are you feeling now? Well, I, I'm just getting by with, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm used to the pain now, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> oh, uh, as far as the COVID is concerned, I'm, I'm through. Yeah, you were ill last time, yeah. Yeah, no, I had the COVID, uh, but that, that, that's gone. I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I have a shoulder problem thing where I, I ripped my rotator cuff and I'm, I'm postponing surgery. So because of that, you know, uh, uh, well, I postponed the surgery simply because... I, I wanted to go to Egypt and I could know there's no way I could have done it otherwise, but it just means I'm living with uh, a bit of discomfort, but it's all right. It's okay. All right, guys. <clears throat> so first of all, what we, um, what we discovered is that I started showing everybody this app, <clears throat> you know, the King's chamber. Mm. And so Robert says, Oh, wow. Those are all matching perfectly the decans, all the different constellations. Yeah. And their positions are identical to the freaking constellations, the things I'm pointing out on the walls, mm. which I don't really know all the constellations, not been really a big area of my study, <clears throat> but he does. 
And so we started mapping it. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, we're discovering new stuff on the walls. It's all the constellations of the decans of the procession of equinox. It's all on all four walls. So in the, in the right order, <laughs> in the right order. Yeah. Well, that, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it does. Yes, make it sense. does. So mm -hmm. here we have the Apis bull, which represents Orion. You can <clears> see <throat> on the Apis bull, there's the, there's this red shaped diamond. But then also underneath the diamond, there's an inverted diamond. You can see the faint line trace of, right? And I can kind of try to point it out with the laser <laughs> thingy. That goes right here. It goes to the center and then comes down on the right side. You see that line? There should yeah. be no linear lines, uh -huh. right? So, and, and what this is, and it's on the other side as well. It's the same as my logo. It's the uh, <laughs> symbol of Orion. My logo is the symbol of Orion. I never even freaking knew it. How funny is that? Because you just take the Orion, uh, the oh, Orion it. shape yeah. and stretch yeah. it a bit, and it's this. And where they meet in the middle is the three... Uh, the three stars. The, the, exactly. The mm. Yep, the three stars. So I started mm -hmm. going around the room, and I said, okay, so we've got this... We've got what looks like Artemis with a bow and arrow and the Aquila, right? The giant Thunderbird that is you know shooting the arrow at the bird well then let's see let me stop share you're recording all this and i i i hate yes, to, i am i hate to, am. You're, you're, gonna have, you're gonna have to send it to me because of this this party thing that we're doing in the in the king's chamber i have to go get fitted for a white tuxedo right now of it, course you do uh, oh gosh <laughs> you're wearing a tuxedo in the pyramid yes okay, just one. look at this real quick Alan. Yeah, i'm wearing a white tuxedo and uh, go ahead show. okay so we started mapping it and said okay here's orion you see this yep okay here's orion so that's going to be in taurus constellation so it goes around the room. So next to it, on that same wall, there should be a Cetus. Well, that's, and, and Cetus and Cassiopeia are, Cassiopeia is the one that's huge, right, Robert? Uh, Cetus is the one that's huge. Cetus that is the, the one that's, that's huge. The lost, it's the, it's the dragons that form the DNA. And literally it crosses the entire wall. And, and so then you go around the room and you get to the other wall, which would be the east wall. Mm. And that's where the Aquila is, which is the Thunderbird and the Delph uh, Delphinus. And here's the symbol of Delphinus. No. Yeah. yeah. Wait, what? Seriously? And Sagittarius, Sagitta, mm. right? Sagitta mm -hmm. is just an arrow. It's the arrow. It's the arrow and the, and the bow. So, and then we found that on the same wall, We've also got right up here, there's a fish, right? Like the uh, Piscus austrinus, right here next to the Delphinus. Mm -hmm. It's right here. So if you look at this, you can see uh, right here, there's a fish. Mm -hmm. The shape of the Vesca Piscus, it's got gills and it's got a tail that goes right here and it's pointed, its head is going this direction to the left. And it's exactly where it should be next to the Aquila. Well, I hate to say this, Robert, but you're almost making a believer out of me. For the longest time, I've just thought you were having acid flashbacks. Um, <laughs> I've never done acid, though. <laughs> <laughs> Residual. <laughs> From Helen. No, this is huge. This is just freaking huge. <laughs> It really is. And mm -hmm. all the all the stuff on the walls that we found already are matching. Now we know what to look for. We'll oh. be able to match all of these to the etchings on the walls. This is a very elaborate thing. And it is the story of Orion going through all of the procession of Equinox mm -hmm. to become Ophiuchus. And Ophiuchus is Thoth. Wow. Is yeah, um... I, I was going to say, Alan, what I did was just the name Thoth, I just added it up like over the alphabet 
um, with obviously 20 being number letter T, 8 being H, 15 being O. So when I added it all together, 28, 28 plus the 15, it gave me 71. And when you look at, <clears throat> look at the wheel, gate 71 is off Yochus. So Thoth basically <laughs> adds the same, to the same thing, which is opposite Orion, right? So yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, the Ophiuchus is looking the how are you how are you pronouncing that? Off off you off you Ophiuchus is the way I pronounce it. Some people call him Ophiuchus. I think that sounds like mucus. I don't like it. No, I like so, Ophiuchus because it's your your Ophiuchus is looking bright. It's um <laughs> obviously you've got, got the word phi in there as well, right? And when you put an uh, S when you put an S in front of it, it's Sophia. Mm. So yeah, that makes sense. Sophia. So it's 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 the phi and it's Sophia as well. So it's you know it's the god it's the god goddess right there. It's the the two DNA. It's the feminine masculine in one body. Right is right there. Yeah. So what does the lupus look like and the crux? The crux is a cross, I'm guessing. And yeah, the crux is the Southern Cross. So that's uh -huh. the crucifixion of uh, obviously the autumn uh, equinox. Um, you know, with the su the sun crucifixion. Lepus is the rabbit or the hare, which is also known as the enemy. Um, it's it's basically the enemy running away from Orion, which is the light. And so it's but it's basically like a a hare or a rabbit. It's a very small constellation. Okay. So oh, sorry, then... uh, you said sorry, lepus oh lepus or lup lupus? Lupus. Oh, lupus is the wolf. That's the sacrificial. That's uh, oh. Little Red Riding Hood. You know Little Red Riding Hood, right? And, of course, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Oh. Yeah. So the story of Little Red Riding Hood. Well, Little Red Riding Hood. She's the sun, right? So she's the red sun, being eaten by the wolf on the autumn equinox mm -hmm. on the cro on the cross. Mm -hmm. so the the little girl, which is the red the sun. When it crosses the autumn equinox, she's being eaten by the wolf. And then what happens is that actually Hercules or the warrior then kills the wolf, opens his belly up, and then takes the the girl out whole to be reborn, which is on the winter solstice. And so then the sun is like this whole, the sun gets eaten, crucified, and then by the wolf, and the wolf is then sacrificed as the animal nature being of, of our own self, the wolf's animal nature of our own human self being sacrificed and wow. then the resurrection of little red riding hood um is the winter solstice the the rise the risen christ the risen sun wow. so yeah where, where, where's the actual source material for where supposedly little red riding hood came from i thought it was a it was was it a grimm's fairy tale or no it, it was actually yeah it was it, when you go all the way back it was um i think it was either german uh, it was a very Euro it was a European uh, like a, a very grim story to start with, um, mm -hmm. and they sort of uh, made it more appealing. But essentially, yeah, it's a, that's the story. It's the sun. It's the the autumn equinox. Is, um, that's wonderful. The lupus is the wolf, the sacrificial wolf. Mm -hmm. Well done, beautiful. Wow. So, oh. so then that means Leo. So the man's face on the wall is the king, Leo. Mm hmm. The large yeah. face that looked like we always thought was like the face of God type of thing. And mm -hmm. the what's the Corvus? What's the Corvus look like? So the Corvus is the raven or the crow. So that's the that's Negredo. So that's the Negredo stage, okay. right? So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. yep. remember what I said about actually the alchemical mystery schools started in Virgo. So mm -hmm. it actually starts at Corvus. The Negredo stage when we go into the yep. into the yep. darkness. The Negredo, the blackening. Mm -hmm. Go through the whole process of the Christ being born from Virgo, nine months all the way through into Leo, where you become the Christ, the King of Kings, which is you know the the Christ. So um, so Corvus <laughs> is the Corvus is the crow, yeah, and and it's, it actually sits on top of Hydra. So the cra crater is the Grail, so it's the cup. And that's the cup that catches the water being poured down from Aquarius. <laughs> so it's the grail, it's the it's the golden platter, you know, like the, the um 
St. John the Baptist's head being served on the golden platter. Yeah. That's also crater. Uh, it's a cup or it's the golden platter or the silver platter. Um, it's the sort of, and both of those sit on. It's to be Christed. So it's matching the Last Supper. Exactly. Where yeah. Jesus is sitting with Mary. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's why the Alpha Omega is on that side. Yeah, and Mary Magdalene, the feast day of Mary Magdalene is right on that line. It's in Cancer. So she's, Mary Magdalene is Cancer and Christ is Leo. So it matches, you know, that. You can do it the other way as well, where she could be uh, Virgo also, because she can be the maiden, but that's also the mother. So it depends how you mm. look at it. You've got the almost like twin feminines can be either. So it depends how you how you look at it with the Last Supper. Would you mind just going through what a, uh, the, there's an enormous connection here, obviously, to all of all of the Shakespeare codes, Bootes yeah. and Crooks is the, uh, from my understanding from the Shakespeare codes where he references Bootes. Uh, it's almost in the very, very first thing that is said in the Tempest, and the crooks is uh -huh. the Southern Cross, isn't it? Yeah, yeah Southern. That's it. Yeah, uh, which is the Swan, and which why they call Shakespeare the Sweet Swan of Avon. Um, well, the, the just tell me, normally, tell me what is, you about Boetes. Boite, yeah, the Swan is normally um, Cygnus. I've not heard of Crux being. Uh, no, it's. You're right. Sorry, you're right. Um, but is not the Southern Cross in the shape? Is it not sometimes represented uh, as a bird? I thought it was. I mean, they be probably wrong. because of the, the shape of it uh, is. But yeah, normally it's the like it, it's signature. You're right. Um, booties, you're going to love this one, the booties one, because when you go really deep into the esoteric, so booties is Lord Arcturus. Yes. Okay. So and and Shing 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 Shing. Somebody ding. just said Arcturus. What? Arcturus, Lord Arcturus. Uh, both, Arcturus. It's both system. Yeah. So what happens is so Virgo has Spica right in in her womb. So if you look at the left hip of Virgo, she has Spica, and that's the the child, the potential Christ child, and. And when he's born, he actually grows up to be Boots. So Boots actually then becomes is Arcturus. And then basically, so the Virgin Mary births Christ, who becomes Lord Arcturus. And Lord Arcturus is actually known as the Cosmic Christ, Lord Sananda. So the Cosmic Christ of Arcturus is Lord Sananda. And that's basically Yeshua's cosmic higher self. So he he basically is the ruler of Arcturus, you could say his cosmic self is the ruler of Arcturus. So that so Bootes is like known as the good. He's like the shepherd, um, but he's also the warrior as well. But it's basically it's it's the birthing of you as the as the Christy, the Christy child. Uh, yeah. and, and it's all linked to Arcturus. Hmm. What a surprise. OK, I actually went to Arcturus in the boot system. In 2018, when I was in the sarcophagus, I was taken there by two Arcturian guides. Yeah, doesn't surprise me with the work you're doing, for sure. Because they're very technical. It's like everything's super analytical. Mathematical. They're very math right. mathematical. Very psychic surgery, that kind of stuff, you know. But yeah, but in the Star Law, basically Boots is Arcturus. And Arcturus is is the Christ, because obviously the Christ was a shepherd, right? So it's... It's... Oh, guys, look, remember I told you there's bears on the top of the wall above the ab above the Taurus? Remember I said that? There's like bear faces up there at the very top on the north wall? Above the bird, right? Yeah, above the bird, it's Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. Oh, man. It's right in the exact spot that it would be. Really? Can we see on the that? north wall. Yep. There are four bear faces that are up on the top of the wall. I think I sent it to you. Um, I'm pretty sure I sent you some of these bareface pictures. Uh, I thought it was a bareface lie. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Sorry. Very funny. Very funny. I, I know. I know. I know. I couldn't resist. Yep. No. So that's another match because mm -hmm. it's exactly where the bare the bare faces are. Um, it's that's, this is really uncanny. I'm really blown away.
So then oh, you should remind me. find out where the pole star is, right? From that. Yes, we can find the pole star from there. Now we know that this is actually what it is. This is like super epic. I can't even believe it. I am so apologetic. I'm so sorry to miss this because it's terrible. I should be able to stay here, but I am literally be getting fitted at four o'clock and I've got to be there at four o'clock. And then because they're, then I'm picking it up tomorrow and then flying Saturday and I can't be in the King's chamber without my white tux. So, yeah. um, uh, please, you know, send Eden's not there, but send, send this on to me and I'll watch it all tonight. Uh, Alan, before you go, um, I just want to say I've got some really good stuff. I connected with the uh, Monas Hieroglyphica. Uh, uh -huh. I've been doing with Shakespeare stuff. So I'd love to chat to you about that at some point. Yeah. Um, well, we're all psyched to, to I, I'm psyched to hear it. Uh, I'm just saying we're all like jammed flying in, in within. Yeah, years. yeah. Just whenever, so whenever. It'll have to be when we get back, when I get back from Egypt. Have to be. Yeah. So I'll 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 give you a buzz as soon as I'm back before Christmas. Yeah, great. Yeah. So guys, this is uh thanks, Alan. Yeah. We'll see you. I'll see you in Egypt. Yeah. What are you so, wearing that's white, Robert? You, you can't beat a white tux. I'm sorry. You can't... <laughs> I'm 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 you know, until I got tan, I was just gonna wear my birthday suit. But Ooh, now God. I'm tan, so I'm a little too dark for a white. Thank party. God you got tan. That's that's a relief. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm wearing uh I'm wearing like a white, you know, white pants and a white shirt. Um <clears throat> it's pretty chilly there right now. I just looked it up. It was like in the evenings it's like 50s. So yeah. that's pretty cold. But um uh -huh. wow. Yeah. So I wanted to show you Robert this. So this right. is Last Take Supper. Care. Alan's already seen this. The Last Supper is matching the uh the king's chamber and the things encrypted in the walls are also the same so there's a cow right here where the bull and cow are there's a cow mm -hmm. in the last supper wall here's the ridge of its back there's an alpha q w right here alpha chi omega here's the head of a cow here's its eye here's its horns right here right and this is oh, did you say a... say again did you say a w yeah, W. You said w, 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 which is the omega, lowercase. Oh. Yeah, it's right the, here. But the W is also Cassiopeia. Yes, that's true. So, uh, so I, I remember you that saying that. Sense. That would make sense if Taurus is to the left and the Cassiopeia is on the right, then that's matching Aries. Yep. Aries it, Taurus. It, right there. So our thesis is that Da Vinci modeled the last supper painting after the king's chamber mm -hmm. and you've got the sarcophagus right here right which is kind of a weird it's sticking out right like why did they paint this thing here it's stupid and it's like there's a port underneath well yeah because this is a portal the the sarcophagus is but in the upper you know you can see the cow right here and then here's the a q w Right, I'll show you the annotation here. Uh, where to go? Annotate. So that would suggest that Aries is on the right, going from right to left. Aries. Can is you on see the my right. arrow? Can you see my arrow? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this is the face of the cow. Here's the ridge of its back, and then there's a bull's a small bull, like a baby bull. In here, I've got a much clearer picture of it. And then Alpha QW, which of course represents Hathor and Apis as well. Mm -hmm. And and that's you know Taurus. And then up here on the right side, you'll see is the um so here's Last Supper, the Christ did on the west wall. Here's the eye of Ra. Right here, you can even see the eyelashes in the pediment, and you can see it's like a it's got a cat eye because it's Leo. Mm -hmm. You see the like the pupil is like a slit right yeah, here yeah. in the pediment. And then on the wall in the king's chamber in the exact same spot is an eye. Right here. If you match the ceiling lines, it's matching the exact same position. Oh, wow. So he encrypted it, right? And so then here's Alpha of the Christ. 
He's got blue and 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 red clothing representing the balance of masculine and feminine. Mm -hmm. And then up here on the wall as well is a sphinx. <laughs> In the Last Supper, there's a sphinx right here. So you take this as the back of a sphinx. Here's the head of the lion. Let's see if I can find another version of this for you. <clears throat> it kind of looks a bit like the Leo constellation as well. It is. It's a Leo constellation. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. So, so then, it's it's a perfect match of Leo constellation, just like as well. Uh, let's see. So here's the Leo right here. Here's the the head of the lion, like a sphinx. Right here's the nose of the lion, comes down, and here's the body of the lion. Yeah. It's overlaid on top of the eye. Yeah. Right. And and then you can see, you know, here's the cow. Here's the ridge of its back. Here's the A. Q W, right? Obviously, it's hidden in the wall, and that means that all this stuff. And notice how this is all light, and this yep. is in the shadow. So Ophiuchus would be over here. So this would be Leo, this is Taurus, this would be uh, Scorpio and Ophiuchus, yep. which of course is a water sign, right? Yep. Earth sign, fire. And then on the back wall is going to be, um, it's going to be Aquarius. Oh, wow. We're looking, we're looking from the Aquarian view. That's right. We're looking from the Aquarian view. Wow. That's, that's impressive. That's a big statement. Yeah. That's actually, that's huge to say that. Yeah, exactly. I, that's, that's quite phenomenal. We're actually looking from the time that we are in. That's right. Wow. Exactly right. So wouldn't it, be, um, wouldn't it be so cool if that was like three D that we could actually zoom, like move around the back of them, like and look at and look like around the room that way? Yeah, I mean, this is looking from the Aquarius right here. Here is the uh, here is the alien head right here. So there's an alien head on here as well, and then there's also a king's crown here, right? And then there's this eye of Ra that's right here. You can see the line coming across here, right? So there's probably more that we haven't seen on this wall yet that relates to Leo. Yeah, because there's another whole like huge block at the top that's like dark. So it'd be interesting to see like if you got right to the very top, like illuminated what that would say. Yeah, so here we go. Lion's mane, profile, small face, lion's face, right? Eye of Ra, all kinds of script on the wall and everything. Yeah, so it's Aries is on the right going to pisces on the left yep mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so wow. and then this was when i figured out that that this painting la belle fronniere is actually anne boleyn mm -hmm. yeah she her... lived in the same house she lived in the same house with da vinci and in the background there's a lion's head on the wall and thomas is pointing his finger up here's the other nostril of the lion Here's the other side of the lion's eye right here. And then the other side of it is in the eye of Horus. It's the dark with the La Belle Fronier as the background. You can see a, it's a lion man, a Leonardo. <laughs> I love that. And Anne Boleyn's, Anne Boleyn's castle is about eight miles from where I live. No kidding. Well, that's yeah. not a surprise. Uh, Blue of Earth, who's coming to Egypt with us. Her great, 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 great grandfather was killed, beheaded with Anne Boleyn because he was one of the people that betrayed the king at the time of Anne Boleyn having an affair. Wow. So you could see here the lion man in the background. See the eye mm -hmm. right here, the nose, and the, the, the lion has his tongue sticking out. Here are the cheek pads of the lion. You know, this is this is interesting because from what I can remember, uh, her actual s royal seal uh, that you can see in Hever Castle, where she, you know where she lived, um, she had her own royal seal, and uh -huh. I think I think there's a lion in it. Well, her royal seal, Bullen, Bullen means bull. Uh, so there's three bull heads on their family crest, um, which is one of the things that we had noted. Let's see if I can find this. There's more here. So it seems to follow that procession of the equinox where it's going counterclockwise, like rotation. It seems to work 
on the last yeah. supper and in the king's chamber that's what it is mm -hmm. uh, i think we've just uh nailed that that is like a super nailing because um and what's interesting is look at this this is the grates on the ceiling of the last supper and there's eyes looking down like watchers there's a large eye right here this is in the grates there's several eyes looking through the grates down at the people and that's the uh the connection i i did last time with the moon that the ceiling was the representation of the moon we're just playing the hunger games for the arcturians maybe <laughs> we just don't even realize it that it doesn't seem so cruel and we don't know right maybe because we volunteered for it but isn't that interesting that uh arcturus is lord sananda which is yeshua's cosmic self <laughs> well i mean actually that's what edgar casey says that when someone dies their spirits go back to arcturus yeah but the uh so uh lord sananda or sananda comes from uh sananda kumara uh and in the ancient vedic history there were four um four children from venus and they were all kumaras the four children of kumaras and you would have you had sanat kumara which is um the the deity that created shambhala sanat kumara mm -hmm of light uh sananda kumara which is basically the christ um and then there's two other ones like sananda nanda um but basically there were four children that were the children of venus and uh and essentially arcturus is one of them so yeah really interesting ancient history so here you can see the two birds above the taurus right above the two bulls so here's the eye of one its wing and its tail, its other wing, and then here's the other bird. Now above it, up here, are bear's heads. Ursa Major, Ursa Minor. And I'll show you, and you can see the wing of this oh, other so bird comes poster. right down here. Can you see it? You see the two birds right here? You see the yes, bird right here? I can. And the other bird right here? One is black and the other one's white. Oh, that makes sense because... Um... Because in above Taurus, because uh, you've got obviously you've got the Pallades, right? And mm -hmm. the Pallades are seven doves. Ah, uh -huh. okay. So the Pallades so are known like the seven sisters. Yeah, so the seven sisters are the seven doves, and what happens is once you get to the Phoenix uh, in Scorpio, then it flies over directly the opposite sign into Taurus, into the Pallades. And that was the Phoenix. So the Phoenix flew over into Taurus. Yeah, and becomes the dove, the Holy the Holy Spirit. Holy which is shit. The seven doves of the Pallades. So it's the dove right above the bull. <laughs> so this was the bull. This is when Susie discovered the bull. Yeah, that's so strange strong you can see it so clear <laughs> it was my logo <laughs> what an <laughs> awesome game oh and my god yeah. what an epic game and then you can see also the hathor right next to it here's the eye here's mm -hmm. the bull you know the cow's body and its its neck right here here's the two horns around it so yeah that's like it's it's such a good game i can't even believe this and then in the last supper look in the exact same spot on the same wall orientated you've got two birds right oh. one is this smaller bird nuzzled up here's its beak right here going in these arrows give you orientation points here's the other beak right here here's the eye here's the wing coming across it's hidden in the wall of the last supper so that's the phoenix and the dove, right? The like, phoenix and the dove come together. Yeah. Because it's the phoenix represents the ascension of man and the dove uh, is the descension of spirit. So you've got the ascension of man and the descension of spirit, the two birds becoming one, the you know, the holy grail, holy, holy spirit. This was one of my first sketches of that wall. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. Looks like there's some sort of thing here it wasn't i don't know what it is exactly but i felt like it represented life and resurrection and then this was fire and this was the phoenix 
right? Like a, this black bird. And there's also a Thoth symbol on the wall on this side. And then I had also drawn, sketched out here, the, you know, the diamond shape. And there's writing on it. And then on the other wall, well, just, it looks just... like this. And it represented death and water. Yes, yeah, so you got Lupus the wolf on the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the wolf. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. shit, yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. You got Lupus the wolf on the left. Uh, obviously, I would say that the skull probably represents the, the cross because when you're the crucifixion is actually the crucifixion at the atlas bone at the base of the skull on the zeal chakra. So as you go up to the last vertebrae, it's, it's the crucifixion into the Golgotha where Christ was crucified. Yeah, Golgotha yep, yep. is the skull, right? So that's the crux right there. The, the it looks like there's some other demon face. The like... animal nature, which is like uh -huh. the... Yeah. So you've what about got, the octopus? Yeah, I mean, you've got those for sure. Well, it could be the... serpents, right? Because, um, uh, or it could be even be Hydra, actually, because, uh, you know, the Hydra had nine, it was nine headed. It was this nine is on the wrong, snake. this is on the wrong wall, though. This would be um, on where the, the crux and lupus and yeah. Coria, Corona Borealis is and the serpents. This is where this is. But you know where... But in the Hercules story, right? Like the 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 actual thing that Hercules has to overcome Hydra. is the Hydra. So it could represent Hercules's because Hercules was ultimately killed by the venom of the Hydra in the end. So that's the thirteenth labor. So this is weird, guys, because I literally just oh man, this is too this is too damn weird. I literally just sent a message to somebody about the hydra and i'm going to show you so i have a picture in minkari pyramid so minkari has the hydra on the wall of the in in it's like the south wall i think in the um king's chamber so let me show you here and that's also where the staff of hermes is there's the staff of hermes I was going to say, by the way, that that uh, Thoth symbol that you had in Taurus, um, because the moon the moon exalts in Taurus. Yep, the crescent moon, right? So the moon ex moon exalts in Taurus. Um, so that would make sense why you would have the Mercury crescent moon symbol there. So check this out. So basically, this is the there's a hydra in the king's chamber of Menkari pyramid over the tree of life and it looks like this and then yesterday somebody posted this it's a freaking hydra like a multi-headed hydra a baby hydra uh, i saw it <laughs> what is it like, <laughs> an eel it's an eel <laughs> with like multiple heads oh my god <laughs> what the hell's going on seriously I mean, this looked like eels with multiple heads. That's basically, what the fuck? Wow. It, it's just, it's just too much. Almost, it's like, what in the hell is going on? So, so, the, so you know, you know the story of the of how Hercules finally died, right? Yeah, yeah. the 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 blood of the Hydra was captured, right, and then it ended up getting into the arrow that he was shot with, or something. Or no, he got. I can't remember exactly the the end of the story, but it ended up dying from that blood of the Hydra. Hydra. Yes. Yeah, so... He had captured it to use for arrows, right? And then and then um, his wife screwed up, and was fooled, tricked into giving it to him, and it killed him. That's it. So she bathed his because uh, he was wanting to get with another woman, and she she want she got told if she gives him this venom then he'll only have eyes for her. So she soaked his cloak in the venom and he basically put this cloak on and it basically, the, the venom then started to burn him. And so then he put, he built his own funeral pyre Yep. and then he burnt himself. But yeah, so that's the 13th, that's the hidden 13th labor is the self-sacrifice of, of the, of the crux.
so he, he actually sacrificed his own mortality to become the final immortal um but it's actually the hydra that that was the second labor that actually is the the key for him is that is without that venom he couldn't become the immortal so it would make sense why it's so crucial in that in that in that space the hydra with him but obviously it's nine heads like yep. it's an an octave right so it's like eight mortal heads one immortal so it's like an octave plus one so uh which links so, back to my 72 being nine you know so here's here's the last supper and here's the the wall it's the same thing alpha qw right here so clearly da vinci encrypted all of this in the last supper which is and exactly where Jesus and Mary Magdalene are sitting is exactly where the Alpha Omega is right here on the sarcophagus rim. Mm. Wow. In the same position, right? So this is like, and then there's a tree on the north wall to the left of Taurus. So that means it's going to be like Gemini. So is there a tree somewhere in here? Uh, yeah, the Christmas tree. <laughs> Where is that? Well, because the Christmas tree goes from, uh, you've got Sirius is the Christmas star, right? Oh, so, if you, uh, if so you it's go, next to Orion. Yeah. So the, so if you go back, then you've basically got where the winter solstice is the base of the tree. So that's where like the presents are put underneath the roots of the tree. And if you go across in the diagram, so from from Sagittarius Capricorn, right? That's the roots of the tree where Draco is. And then if you go up and the peak of the tree would be in Gemini, which is Sirius and Alcyon, the twin. Great Gemini. Sun. Yeah, in Gemini. So the Christmas tree. So this spans... is Gemini. This is exactly where Gemini is. Look, there's a tree right here. Yeah. So it spans. See the line? It literally is the Christmas tree. So you've got the tree of Holy life. Holy fuck's sake. <laughs> that's what i'm saying this is quite hilarious because you've got the winter solstice uh capricorn sag where you've got draco sagitta uh, that's the winter solstice and you imagine going like kind of up uh opposite the altar which is ara the altar um so if you go directly up into canis major then that's the christmas tree it spans that's the tree of life it spans the whole it's thing. a tree and of life yeah alcyon and Sirius. Yeah, so that's perfect. So that, that literally is the tree. So there you are. <laughs> there you are. It's uh, <clears throat> wow. <laughs> it looks like this. There's a tree right here. This is when we were on the trip and we were in um, in the Assyrian, and then we discovered Alpha, Chi, Omega. On the wall, those are Arcturian symbols, by the way. Alpha. And look what shirt I'm wearing. Alpha Chi Omega. Look at that. Alpha Chi Omega shirt. And then as a group, we discovered Alpha Chi Omega on the wall and these are these are debossed right or so this would be embossed rather so they're raised symbols on the wall you can see a rose in the center of the cross the rose crooks wow mm -hmm. alpha chi which is just the same shape as will had made for these t-shirts what the fuck what a game like you know legit game this gate 35, which is where Sirius is, mm -hmm. um, that actually has a special connection to the DNA stop code on there. It's like, a, uh, well, it's the, a okay, dude, well, that's, that's what I, that's, that's exactly where the DNA thing is. It's right here. What? Oh, wow. Okay. Right next to the tree attached to the tree is the DNA right here. Look. Oh, well, wow. That's because that's what they call the, the next, that's the gate of the next DNA to come. 
is gate 35. Is there a stop code on? <laughs> we're winning. We're winning this game. So, uh, yeah. Oh, Seems Talal, really this is going to be hack. one epic paper. Oh, my gosh. And uh, gate gate 68, the higher gate octave of it, is where, where we find uh, supersymmetry theory. So super string theory and supersymmetry theory. So right on that gate 35, the top of the tree, uh -huh. is, is basically where we're starting to now see supersymmetry theory. Like, And that's the, the biggest... At the moment, obviously, in the quantum theory, that's like what they're trying to prove at the moment that... Well, there's everything... a third dragon, okay? There's two dragons that intertwine to make the DNA. And then above that, there's a third dragon. The third dragon is uh, is larger than the other two. And it goes so, across the entire wall. I'll see if I can find it for you. So that would be Hydra, Cetus, and Draco, the three dragons, right? Yeah, it's like the it's like the third, and so one of them is four thirty two, the other is five twenty eight. The Giza Plateau is that four thirty two five twenty eight combo. The length of the Giza Plateau is five twenty eight, the width of it is four thirty two. And and so there's a there's a third frequency that comes out of it, and I think it's four hundred and forty four hertz. Wow, which is super interesting because when I when you add the 72 gate system so 72 hexagrams so 72 times uh the six lines of the hexagram you end up with 432 so mm -hmm. the 72 the lost octave brings it into a 432 harmonic which makes a lot of sense for what you're what you just said with the geezer plateau oh yeah i'll show you that in a second so here you can see the thoth written on the wall o t h i believe da vinci left this here it looks like it's painted, not etched. Um, I think when he was there, I think he left it there. Don't ask me how I know. I just remember. And the 126, which is like right here etched into the wall, is matching the upper right corner of the Vitruvian Man. And the backwards B is pointing to 126. There's a page number, but Vitruvian Men wasn't in a book. Yeah, which I um, remember I said I, when I looked at that myself, I actually saw that as 12 times 6. Well, of course, that gives us 144, right? So it's also the angle. It's also the how much you have to increase the side of a, a square or a cube to double its volume. It's doubling the cube. Mm -hmm. It's can, the doubled that, cube. Like the so, next Next octave. Next octave. That's exactly what it is. The next octave and the new DNA. Mm -hmm. So we're actually finding evidence that the stuff isn't just fairy tale stuff. It's real. And this was significant. This was the face on the back wall. The Leo, the king. Oh, wow. Okay. That looks like Leonardo da Vinci, but okay. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's obviously Orpheus who's got the crown on his head, right? Because obviously the the serpents is going up. The the north node is going towards the crown, the corona yep. corona borealis. So um it's that's obviously him finally illuminated, finally crowned. Yep, which is exactly what I downloaded just like last week. And I posted about it right here. Mysterious Bacchus painting by Leonardo da Vinci. Bacchus is the Roman name for the Greek god of wine. It's also known as Dionysus. Dionysus is closely associated with both Osiris and Orion and Asclepius. Can we see any of Leonardo's signature hidden encryptions inside of this lesser known work of art? Let's have a look. First, can you see the scorpion at Bacchus's feet? Then, can you spot the serpent snake wrapped around his arm and on his lap while he's seated? 
this snake was actually painted over in the 19th century, replacing the ivory print with leopard skin. But what else can we see? Let's have a closer look. The serpent on his lap, you can see his head and his finger pointed to its eye, the scorpion at his feet, the rod of Asclepius, the great sphinx off in the distance, Sobek, which is the crocodile god, and the infinity symbol over the tree of life. And then an elephant. Can you see the ox skull at the top? And then the shadow self that looks demonic over his left shoulder. And then a demon subdued, maybe meaning that he's subduing his demons. And of course, the triple crown up at the top. Rice Corona Borealis. This is Ophiuchus constellation, huh. known as the serpent bearer. Yeah. It's the sitting god. The serpent wrapped around his arm and on his lap, just as we've seen in Bacchus painting, the crown as well. The scorpion at his feet. Can we see something else? If we look even closer, is this writing here on the backside of the scorpion? What does this writing say? You can see it. Actually, it says Tav Aleph, or Aleph Tav, read backwards, which means Alpha Omega. This is no future, it's the 13th zodiac. It's opposite Orion Osiris in the sky. Ophiuchus, known as a serpent bearer, sits in between Scorpio and Sagittarius. So notice the 13th zodiacal sign. Is this painting of Bacchus actually, more appropriately, Ophiuchus? The matching sitting stance of the snake on his lap, wrapping his arms. Well, let's look at Osiris and Orion opposite Ophiuchus in the night sky. The boastful hunter and known womanizer, Orion, who wanted to conquer everything, is also represented on the Giza Plateau as the three bell stars represent the position of the three pyramids. In the mythology, Orion was stung by a scorpion, and he was saved by Ophiuchus, Asclepius, with his rod. This god of medicine saved him, a metaphor possibly for the merger of the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Did the scorpion sting result in an actual death of Orion? Or was it just an egoic death of the boastful hunter going from the boastful Orion to the wise Ophiuchus, who is in control of his Kundalini life force? This merger representing the super conscious mind. The super conscious mind represents the balance, the perfect balance of masculine and feminine energies, the heart brain coherence. Does this also pretend a possible change in DNA as an accompaniment? to this achievement of the superconscious and emergent superconscious mind. The superconscious mind represents also the shift in the zodiac. Ophiuchus is exactly opposite Orion. Is Orion actually just the missing 114th of the zodiac? Now adding the 13th and 14th zodiacal signs. We also notice the thrice crown crown is matching that of the Hierophant sitting next to the elephant in the Ophiuchus or Bacchus painting. Does the shift actually represent a crown chakra activation as well? So you were saying that the other one was Cetus. Yeah, but, I mean... Because it's a gigantic one, right? And it goes all the way across. So Cetus would go all the way because it's so big, all the yep. way into Gemini, I'm guessing. Uh, it actually has its paw over Iridanus. So it actually, the, the idea is that the sea monster actually tries to stop the flow of the Kundalini because uh, it puts its paw over the river, which is Iridanus, the spine, the, the Kundalini energy. So, yeah, it definitely spans like... Aries into, of Taurus. Into Taurus. And, of course, it's connected into Andromeda, uh and pisces so yeah it's pretty pretty significant pretty big but it was right on top of orion then yeah it was uh it's right right there it's pretty 
as I say, they, they do say that it was actually the 14th. Um, but like you said, I mean, the thing is, Orion's so huge also that it's around that area. I think it, I think the 14th one for sure is around between Cetus and Orion. It's there's a gap there for sure that that could. Fit I, I think it's a, I think it's one of those confusing ones on purpose. It's like encrypted. I think the missing 114th is Orion because that's the whole point. The missing yeah. 114th is related to the Osirian, uh, you know, Osiris story and and losing his penis. Yeah, I 100% I agree. That's why Gate 72 is literally like Iridanus Orion. It's like right on that cusp. So, um, but because there's always there's always a discrepancy with Cassiopeia as to whereabouts it actually starts. Like the beginning of the cycle, there's always a... Uh, and Orion is Gate 27. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's palindrome. It's over 37. Yeah, and it's the palindrome of 72. Yeah. Right in the same gate. So... Yeah. Yep. It's um but yeah, Cassiopeia is always a funny one because Cassiopeia is actually a pole star, really. Um, so it's you know, it, it's always like a an interesting one where it starts and finishes. So that's why there's probably a discrepancy of Cetus and Orion. But I agree, I think the whole story really it's about Orion and us and Hercules or Fiochus. It's about yep. that whole trip around the wheel, you know, and yep. the body. The embodiment of a human journey and then the spiritual journey becoming one you know so yeah i agree 72 yep. is it is matches about... with this as well really interesting about your work is that you have created um research that i've never seen before where you're connecting a lot of da vinci's work to ancient egypt and a lot of the symbols that you talk about have a hidden meaning so i was wondering if you had any more evidence of this that could kind of strengthen that connection between da vinci and ancient egypt oh uh, you want to see it you see this weird little thing hanging out here on the left side of mona lisa's face what does that look like to you like a c it know. looks like a letter c doesn't it kind of looks like a c yeah but it's also got these things coming off the bottom of it so it's almost like it's it's writing somehow, but it also could just be, if you flip this on its side, it's the shape of an omega. Okay, it's the exact shape of an omega. In fact, it's the exact shape of the omega on the rim of the sarcophagus in the Great Pyramid. The omega has, the, the instead of having flat lines at the bottom, right, it's like coming off at, at 137 and a half degrees. Now, what I noticed also was that on the Vitruvian Man right here, you'll notice that, you know, there's 14 lines that were cut into the Vitruvian Man. Why 14 lines? Because Osiris was cut into 14 parts by his brother Seth. Okay, he was cut into 14 parts. But the point is that if you'll notice here, there's an extra line here. On the other side, there's no extra line. There's a line at the wrist, but there's no line right here. Do you see this line right here? What does this look like? It looks like a cuff, doesn't it? So why would there be a cuff on his hand? Do you see it? Do you see this line? You see this line? Yep. It's like a cuff, but on the other side, there's no such cuff. And then if you notice also, it looks like there's almost like a chain dangling faintly with another letter C right here that's sort of broken. It's like a broken shackle. So he's missing the shackle. So what I did is I said, well, wait a minute. Maybe the paintings by Da Vinci actually all connect to each other via you know, overlays. So if we overlay them, is there a message? Because everyone looks for encryptions within each individual painting, but nobody ever looked at encryptions to combine the paintings, right? So what I did is I then took and said, okay, let's put the Vitruvian man. If I were Da Vinci, how would I encrypt this? What I would do is I would take the width of the square of Da Vinci's Vitruvian man where his fingertips are going to the edge of that square, I would place the fingertips to the edges of the Mona Lisa, exactly to the edges of the Mona Lisa. And then I would also place the feet on the little stand exactly that her hands are resting on. And if I did that, then what happens? Well, what happens is the Vitruvian man, which has a circle also, then perfectly crowns the Mona Lisa. So her head fits perfectly inside this circle now. And this is a very specific proportion because 
the finger is coming to the each edge of the end of the exact proportion of the of the Mona Lisa. And I thought, well, if I put the Vitruvian man in this position, does the shackle end up over his wrist? And it freaking does. Wow, that is really crazy. I mean, so if it is crazy, huh? It's the so, uh, broken it's chain the... broken chains of Andromeda. Broken chains of Andromeda. So uh -huh. where is Andromeda on here? Andromeda is right here by Piscus, yeah. right? Pisces. So the broken chains of Andromeda, that's really interesting. So it's like yeah. broke away from Andromeda. So the Mona Lisa is Andromeda. So to me, the huh? It's Andromeda then, the Mona Lisa. I would say the Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa is kind of representing the, the freed woman, like the broken chains of, you know, the sacrificial woman. She's now freed, right? Like it kind of between those two images, it's the broken chains of Andromeda escaping Cetus, the, the sea monster. And so that was saved by Perseus. Yeah. Which is, which is Zeus, right? It's Jesus, Perseus. It's, it's, it's a, it's another, metaphor for the hero of the christ right the christ has saved the sacrificial feminine um and freed her from the chains wow okay this is really epic and we're we're in the time of cephas and cephas is the king that sacrificed his own daughter so he's the old tyrannical patriarchal king that didn't want his city to be destroyed so he sacrificed his own daughter to save his own skin and his own city. Um, and then the Christ Perseus, which is Zeus. So uh, that means that saves. Leo, right? So Leo is going to be on the, okay. So you got Ophiuchus, you've got Orion and you've got Aquarius. And the opposite of Aquarius is Leo. Yeah. So you've got the king, the wise man, the boastful hunter, and the water bearer. And they're all in quaternity to each other. So, so say that again. So, so, the, the, so you've got Orion, Orion, the boastful hunter. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the water bearer. Then you've got the Ophiuchus, and then you have the the king, the Leo. So, oh, the other king, yeah. Yeah, you've got four archetypes representing this hero's journey for Orion. Which is the fixed, the grand fixed cross. That's right. Which the is grand what, fixed what crux. Yeah, which is what we're moving into right now. That's right. So... You, so seen from the water bearer's perspective, it can see the other three. The Ophiuchus comes into sight, the Orion comes into sight, and the king. Yeah, and it's pouring, and remember the Aquarius's waters is pouring from, it's like, a, you know, the um, what's the card in the tarot where they pour the two cups? Because you've got Aquarius pouring the water into Crater, and Crater's the other, is the Holy Grail, is another chalice. So it's catching leo's catching the waters of aquarius so that from the future it's also so, the floods mm -hmm. the floods the the pulse the pole flip the pole yeah. shift yeah absolutely absolutely it's so, just all part of the cycle yeah and we, like i say we literally can see we're in the cephas age and if you look at the years as well uh, 137 years exactly till we're officially in the uh actual aquarian age obviously we could say we're in it now but you know according to sort of the the dates we have um on the slide we've literally 137 years yep it's exact epic <laughs> so till till we so this is the island i just went to visit this year I was just on this island this week, Bora Bora. And something told me mm. that this represented the Ouroboros. 
and but it's actually the squared circle. That's why the shape of the island is kind of like a, a quadrangle, right? It's four sided. And so you've got the Ouroboros here with the crown. Uh -huh. Look at that. This is Lemuria. This is one part of Lemuria. This is why I, I was supposed mm -hmm. to go there. And there's a dragon inside. There's a dragon surrounded by the Ouroboros snake. Yeah, I really liked your connection you made here. I thought that was pretty cool. The snake eating its tail. I mean, it's even got a little mouth right here. How crazy is that? With the eye and everything. Like, what the fuck? What a weird <laughs> world we're living in, man. It, it is, is too much. <laughs> it's just so yeah. weird. It is. And then the new pyramids we're going to at Abu Rawash, I modeled them. And here they are. One's the equilateral triangle pyramid. The other is the is the Philosopher's Stone. They're both Philosopher's Stone, but this is the Michael Meyer uh, Atalanta Fugions proportions. This one's 103.7 feet, which is two times the pyramid, Great Pyramid slope angle. So doubled octave. And they're called the Jed Pyramids. One's got a 60 degree angle. The other one's got a 67.4 uh, degree angle. Hey, Robert, you're not going to believe the numbers on Bora Bora. The uh, if you add it up through the letters, yeah. So, like the 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 word Bora is, is equals thirty six. So Bora Bora equals seventy two, which is exactly what I've just found in the lost octave. That's Eridanus, so, the lost octave, which is the um, which is thirty six. Thirty six is obviously the circle and the square, exactly what you just said. <laughs> So it makes the circle square and 72 being the triangle. So it's like, uh, it's literally the philosopher's stone, Bora Bora, like what you just said. Like what I drew here also, yeah. which I called it the Tesseract of time because oh, this is yeah. how it splits six smaller cubes across, right? Six by six, 36, 36, 36, 36, circle and square. And the magic, uh, um, the magic square for six by six is the sun. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thirty-six. But interest isn't it interesting at thirty-six, thirty-six. Bora Bora <laughs> equals seventy-two. The lost octave. It's just kind of. It's just crazy. It's so crazy. We're just in like such a weird matrix. <clears throat> so you know, I, I was making all these. I started just this week. I went to kind of using all this higher dimensional uh, perspective drawing, which I've done, but not in motion. So now on computer, I can do it all in motion, which is fourth dimension. Oh, by the way, that was my revelation this week was, uh, uh, it's probably a bit much to go into, but I had a revelation this week that the Mona Lisa is the missing uh fourth dimension mona lisa actually is about time yep so 100 I, I had a that was basically something that came this week um all to do with how basically the eye follows you and that's how time works follow that's follow right following perception so i i linked that to the mona lisa and the mona's hieroglyphica as well what i was saying to alan that i wanted to share with him also um, but yeah, it just came to me like that's the missing piece, right? It's like the Mona Lisa is is about you know time and space. Yep. Uh, yeah, because because her body is the shape of the philosopher's stone, sixty seven point four degree uh, pyramid. Also, she perfectly fits that, and that represents time, and that time tesseract I just showed you. Mm -hmm. And then this, you can see the five twenty eight by the four thirty two. It's a 24 note scale. Each note is one aeon of a thousand years. Wow. I just looked at that 528 divided by eight mm -hmm. is, six, is 66. Yep. And gate 
and gate 66 is the age of aquarius there you go there you go it's the it's the the newest master number from if we change the 64 uh grid into 72 then we get the lost master number 66 in aquarius um it's just very interesting that 528 gives us that gate so i think we are solving this this game yeah having having kind of the patterns and the placements of where to look is huge and then you know intuitively it'll be easier to spot so it's just amazing as you said robert that the it linked together the things we have found fit this so it's mm -hmm. like you know if we would have just been like oh i think we see this but there it is and it's in a star chart at a certain time from a certain view that's pretty cool so that's a that's a huge piece you're bringing rob i appreciate that you huge. really are no there there is no doubt about that there there was i don't know how we got was it you rob asking me to get on the math group again this week or did i reach out to you because there was something where i was like we've got to make sure rob's there no, and I like, literally messaged you and I said, I haven't heard anything. Yeah, um, so I got you with Eden. Yeah, I'm yeah. so glad. <laughs> can you make so sure awesome. we get him on? Uh, can you make sure we get him on to Orion as well? Okay. Uh, make sure that he gets a link invite for that. What I was going to um, say was to finish that up is like, um, because obviously I've linked it to the hexagrams in the I Ching, and then that's linked to the DNA. So what's super interesting is we can, in the King's chamber, we could almost say that that part of the wall is this particular DNA Hertz frequency or sound. So it's almost like we could not just map the constellations, but we could actually map the I Ching grid and we could actually match the DNA, uh, you know, ATCs, CCG. Yeah. We could actually map that on the whole wall and see if there's like a, a whole load of the amino acids that are all linked to it. Well, let's see if it matches up with what I found, what I downloaded this week too. So it's right here. I put all the notes into it. Here's all the frequencies and precise temperament. Oh, you cool. see this? Okay. Yeah. These are all the notes. Oh, wow. Right here. As you just spiral up octave. As it goes so around. So that could lead us to particular DNA sequences with particular Hertz, potentially. Yep. Wow, epic. I'm just sort of stunned by all this because it's just, it's kind of a little overwhelming, to be honest. It's well, like the, time, the timing makes sense. You're about to go in with fresh eyes to the King's Chamber, and here we go, right? Like, this is so perfectly timed to get this. Oh, it's so perfectly timed. There's no doubt about that. Um, I'm trying to find you the bears picture. That's like the, it's the, it's the, you know, icing on the cake. And here's another one I've been drawing a ton of right here. And by the way, in that, um, picture of the, uh, that you had, um, the Leonardo da Vinci one with the Orpheocus was uh -huh. the whole, was the, the staff that you had, is that on the actual degree of the axitonal um uh alignment of the earth is it 23.5 degrees i didn't measure it yet but it probably is yes it looks like it it looked like yeah i was gonna say it just looked like it from from its view yep i think you're probably right on that one it was amazing so, uh, the 23.4 huh shout out to rick yeah the 23.4 exactly yeah, I just um, wonder if the, the staff was leaning on that on that degree because the way he was pointing to it, it was like the ridge. Yep, there's no doubt. No doubt for me on that one. Okay, so let me see if I can find this thingy for you. All right. Well, so... you're looking there, Robert. I just got a call from Jeremy. He just wanted uh -huh. to remind you about the VO that last the two. Okay, months. yeah. Okay. Got it. All right, I have to finish here in just a tad in a minute. But um, is there anything that would point to? Okay, so in the Da Vinci painting, Last Supper, there's a DNA that goes across the wall, like the serpents, right? So that's probably the serpents on the left wall, the water wall. Here it is. Mm -hmm. You see it right here. Yeah, because you've got Scorpio, which is obviously uh, Judas. 
Yeah, it would be serpents, I guess. Yeah, Serp so you got uh, Judas being Scorpio. So yeah, you're going to be. Mm, yeah, and here's Judas right here. Yeah, so you got Draco. Draco would be on the left part of it, or like middle left, and then mm -hmm. serpents on the very on the right side. So yeah, so you, you can see why they would link together for sure. And interesting, you would actually have the altar in the middle of that. You know that the you know that's the altar that um, that Zeus uh, sacrificed before the Battle of the Titans. So it's very interesting. Like in that middle section, would have been the sarcophagus. The, yeah, yeah, it would have been the altar stone. So yeah, you got the yeah, battle of uh, battle of Saturn and Jupiter right there. This right here. Yeah, you could see a lot of a lot of the stuff more clearly on this one. But you can see the DNA here and you can actually see the lumen of the DMA inside of it too. It's like stretching across this whole wall. There's also looks like a staff of Hermes right here. Is there any reason why there would be a staff of Hermes next to the Christ or the Leo constellation? You could see it. Here's like the snakes of the staff of Hermes coming down. You would have you would have Centaurus, the medicine man, Asclepius, Asclepius. But isn't Asclepius yeah. also Ophiuchus? Yeah, well, it's like um, because you have it was it's kind of uh, confusing because you actually have Centaurus in Virgo, but you have like Sagittarius. Yeah, that's also. exactly where Centaurus would be. You're yeah, right. So it's, so it's Centaurus, the medicine man. Yeah, so it's Asclepius. Yeah, Damn. so perfect. You would have the staff right there. Exactly. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, here it is right here. Look. Just like this. So that's Asclepius. That's wow, Centaurus. Yeah, because yeah, you literally have, you have Leo. You have, yeah, because you have Wow, yeah, that's perfect. That's literally like, yeah, that's literally it. That's where Centaurus would be. Well, we've got a whole book here, man. This could be a massive book. I'm writing one. I'm doing it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I know. But this Egyptian one is uh, relating to the all of that's quite, yeah, it's quite profound, to be fair. Robert, Look at I, this. I just, just sent to you through Orion the pictures of the bears. Oh, you found it? Yeah. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Oh, wow. Is, is that the red and white dragon there? Yes. You know, that's that you know that happens on Beltane in Taurus. No, exactly. I didn't know that, but of course it does. I mean, yeah. We're that unraveling is... this whole thing, guys. I'm it's I'm true. glad because like few people believe me on this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so on right where Taurus is on Beltane is the is the uh, ancient pagan battle of the red and white dragon, um, of when the the winter king and the and the new summer king have a battle basically, and uh, mm -hmm. that's where you get the the holy the holy thorn and the oak tree. They basically have this this ancient battle on Beltane, and it's the changing of the you know changing of the the red and the white. So that makes a whole load of sense why it's right on Taurus. Okay, so here's the bears. You can see one of the bears' ears right here, which is matching up with this one, this pointy ear here, and right here in his face right here. So these are basically the Ursa Major and Ursa Minor in the exact right spot. They're above the two birds, the, the dove and the phoenix. Yeah, wow. I wonder where the, po where the pole start would be exactly in that. So where should it be? It's in the it's in the tail of the little bear. This little one right here. It should be well. I don't know if it if it should be in the stars. It's in the tail of the little bear. So if that's the small bear, so Ursa then, Minor. It'll be uh yeah it'll be in the tail of uh, Ursa Minor, which means then that the that which that, makes sense because this is the North Wall. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> okay, so. Which is interesting because that is the the bears are the swastika. Yep. Which so, I've been getting tons of downloads about lately. 
yeah so that's the axis mundi so that's the that's the that's the swastika the bears and then the little bit pointing to the pole star of the little bear so it should be yeah it should be on the bottom kind of where that eagle is it should be maybe it should be right in the middle of the wall if this is the north wall and the pyramid's perfectly oriented north it should be right in the middle of the wall and that's where the bear is the little bear is right in the middle of the wall oh is that the little bear in the middle right right here this little one yeah oh that's cropped in so yeah we're in the middle okay that's the middle of the wall yeah it's the middle of the wall well that's interesting because that means that then in the time that it was built that would have been the pole star for them so that would be interesting you might be able to tell the history of when the pyramid was actually built if that is the alignment of the pole star that they used because obviously I already the know. they told me it was thirteen thousand years ago yeah that's a, that's what i that's what i think a lot of people but, think it's like thirty thousand. it wasn't it was thirteen thousand years ago and the bears are also in the last supper too in the same place above the two birds wow that's yeah yeah so that's the yeah, that's the swastika that's the that's the, yeah, the pole star. Wow. So let me see if I can find, oh, I know where I, because I, I sent it to Alexander. So there should be a picture. Which is quite funny. It's in the Last Supper because the, um, the bear is the, is the ladle, right? It's the, it's the soup ladle to, for, to serve the soup for the supper. <laughs> so. so this is the, this is what the North Wall looks like. So mm -hmm. there's a small bear on the side here. It's right in the middle of the wall. I didn't draw it in this picture. Here are the two birds. Here are the three dragons. But actually, I made a mistake. I thought the third dragon was going down and intermixing with this. It's not. It actually stays up high. You can see part of that third dragon right here. Twisting. Like, goes like this, up and down, and there's, like, another one that goes with it. And I called this the, you know, 12th strand DNA. Yeah, which is the um, which is the three rivers. Yep. In the uh, in the Vedic uh, in the Vedic myth, uh, it's actually a chakra point. The three rivers. It's called the it's called the confluence of the rivers, and in the ancient Vedic tradition, it was uh, the river Sarasvati, Yamuna, and the Ganga, and they basically the three rivers, the three sacred rivers all converged uh, and it's a chakra point within the body and they all converge. The, the three, the Ida, Pingala, Shashimna converge at that point and that's the, known as the three rivers. So that kind of looks like that uh, depiction to me. Yep. So, um, okay, well, I think we are figuring this out. Oh, and this by the way, the... Uh... the the crown is also, uh, I was going to say, the crown is also, could be the the honeybee, the honey, the, the beehive. Because in Cancer uh, constellation, you have the beehive, mm -hmm. which, is where, where the, the, which is the crown over the top of the chalice. So if you, if, on your head, it's the crown that comes over, and then the, the chalice underneath, skull, which catches the, the nectar, the amrita, the golden honey. So, which is the sacred secretion of the, the DMT from the, so the cancer constellation, the crown could actually be the beehive constellation in Cancer. Yeah, that's the because man, that's why known as the Ophiuchus, gate of man. That's why Ophiuchus's crown was the triple crown in the shape of the beehive on the Bacchus painting by Da Vinci. So right here. And it's, yeah. Right here. And it's, it's a the beehive. Bee. Yeah, so that's the that's John the Baptist is uh is the cancer constellation. Bingo bingo. <laughs> and funny enough, it's the bee, it's the bee breath that activates the three rivers. So it's the bee the bee humming and a particular um focus on the particular point. But when you do the bee humming, it activates the, the bee hive. And then that starts to vibrate the spinoid bone, which is the Ark of the Covenant, which then starts to mix, alchemically mix the milk and the honey in 
in the uh, third ventricle for illumination. Yeah. So it, it makes so much sense. That's why that's why I went to Ora Bora, <laughs> Bora Bora, all by myself. Because I went to attend Billy Carson's wedding, a marriage between a black guy and a white light guy a woman. Marriage of dark and light. And you should see the pictures from it. It was pretty pretty amazing. Uh, it was beautiful actually. It's like let's see if we can uh, pull it up here. Yeah, so the crown is the crown is the gate of man. The crown is the gate of man. Exactly. Sarah, there's the wedding. Look at that. In front of a circle. It's like infinity circle in front of a big volcano on that place. The volcano looks like a big dragon asleep in the back. It looks like a dragon in the It is a dragon. It's go it's Godzilla. It is. It's Godzilla. Godzilla. Ah. There it is. There's the dragon. We're right over here. This is where we were, like right on this thing right here, the tail. Wow. And it All adds... right. So is, is everybody freaked out like I am? The, the realization, I already knew that we're in a matrix, but holy bejesus. Guys, we literally just cracked the Great Pyramid, what it's telling us. You might have even converted Alan, which is saying a lot. <laughs> That's saying a lot, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's it's just too much now, guys. I mean, come on. Da Vinci no, did it. It's like too much. I like the I like the broken shackles of Andromeda. That that's that's yeah. I love that in the Mona Lisa. It's like she's the solar feminine that breaks free, right, from the restraints with the two cuffs. I mean, that's just for me, that's beautiful, really. And that's time, right? She's breaking free of time. Breaking free of time. Which is and the, that's what I just posted yesterday, guys. Which Look. is the unfolding of the unfolding of the box into the crucifixion, right? So Look, this is this was even the song. No, the audio's not coming through for us, though. We cannot hear the music. Oh, wait, can you guys not hear this? We can't hear oh, because it. Not. okay, yeah, yeah. Hold on, you got to hear these words. It's like all part of this. For every kid, for the two of us, <laughs> and so that's what I wrote here. Make time stop. Look, make time stop. <laughs> Exodus, Exodus from time. Yeah. Right, that's what we're doing in Egypt. Hero's journey, throat chakra, hero's gamos, magnum opus, Orion, and Orion's belt. And it's going to happen at twelve twelve. At midnight, twelve twelve twelve. It is on like Donkey Kong. It's exactly <laughs> the crossover point between the twelfth and the thirteenth. And I basically just asked everyone for a global meditation without saying it was global meditation. Focus your intention. The lips of wisdom are sealed except to the ears of understanding. Well, the, the numerology on that date is uh, interesting, Robert. It brings us to the 6-5, the penta. Uh, of course, hexapentacus. Yeah. The timeless romance of the hexapentacus. And, and you know the first... And look, look at this. It's in X. That's yeah. what we're in. The Chi, Alpha, Chi, yeah. Omega, in X's. <laughs> and it's the 24th chromosome, too. We now have 24 chromosomes. Which is funny because the, the 24th letter of the alphabet is the X. Because the day brings it to 65. And gate 65 was the first next higher gate within the lost octave so it was from 64 and it goes to 65 which is leo and that day is gate 65. holy shit, man this is some intense stuff i i don't even know what to think about this this is like i'm i'm completely mind screwed right now <laughs> I'm like literally wow. No. It's it's amazing. It's great. 
So we just cracked the greatest mystery of the most (laughs) enigmatic mystery of the world for the last, I don't know, how many thousands of years. Wow. And it's in Crater. Gate 65 is Crater, the the cup or the Holy Grail. That's why I was in Bora Bora. It's a giant crater. It's a volcanic (laughs) crater. That's right, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and wow. and the crater catches it, the crater catches the water coming down from aquarius yeah so literally it's like the the embodiment the embodiment of aquarian age damn and that's exactly what it was it was like a whole lemurian thing and i felt it and by the way it's the antipode of egypt bora bora if if egypt ha- was the north pole of the planet then the south pole is bora bora they're really okay. Oh wow! So talk know. about poles flipping. <laughs> wow, that's the inverted pyramid, right? <laughs> it's the inverted pyramid. Making it your logo again. Yeah, unbelievable! I am so mind screwed. <laughs> I literally don't even know. Wow! I'd love to hear your <laughs> thoughts. What do you guys think? Are we completely insane, Jamie? <laughs> Well, being insane together is a wonderful group to join, right? Yeah, it, 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 the more tendrils, the more times it attaches, it just confirms it more, you know, and you can try to deny it. I think a lot is going to come out when you guys are in the King's Chamber and you're with Alan and other folks that have been in there multiple times because, you know, it might be a layer of an onion kind of thing in your own consciousness, the more... The yeah. more you can peel away the layers, the more clearly you can see it. And so I'm especially curious to see what happens with Alan in there. My hit is that something like because I don't know, he's the one who's been the most resistant to this. Um, but even just now, he was like, oh, shit, if it all lines up and they're all in the right order, then it's hard. To, you can't deny it at a certain point. <laughs> um but then, the, then you know, not just... This is not just a launch of Orion. It's literally the launch of Orion, the constellation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a Zodiac, fully-fledged Zodiac. Yeah. What the fuck? Well, wow. and then there's, there's the fact that this is starting to really hit the mainstream in a new kind of way. I don't know if you saw this, but like Jimmy Corsetti, you know, who is that? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right inside. Yeah. He, he was on Joe Rogan. And they talked about the the whole like pyramids might be older than we think kind of thing. And then it went viral on TikTok, probably Jimmy's TikTok, I would guess, all the way to the point where Tucker Carlson, of all people, picked it up and went, hey, look at this. The, they're trying to stop these guys from talking about like maybe we didn't get the story of ancient civilizations correct. And so that guy like. Tucker Carlson like hits a whole gigantic segment of the world that has absolutely no idea about Graham Hancock or you or Nassim or any of those folks. Right. And so like, people are like, what, what then they go to TikTok? So like, there's probably millions and millions of people that are thinking about this for the first time, just in the last like couple of weeks because of Tucker Carlson, because of Joe Rogan, because of Jimmy Carsetti, because of Graham Hancock, like, you know, so it's like, it's going, it's going, you know, mainstream, this stuff. It's like, it's all going to align, right? We're like, you're going to end up on Joe Rogan is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I know it's coming. And then it's all over. It's all <laughs> over. Because Joe's audience is not to be reckoned with. It's gigantic, ginormous, right? And it's the only video podcast on Spotify. So, like, if you're on there, like, who the hell knows? You just got to, you got to like somehow be succinct because even though it'll be three hours, you got to somehow fit infinity into three hours, which I know we all have practiced doing, but that's right. (laughs) Hey, um, so Will, could you get the, uh, the link to this and download it and put it on YouTube? I cannot. It doesn't, it doesn't come to me. However you guys record them. I, I think it just goes. Oh, so you could get it from, uh, from Eden. Okay. You She's traveling, but I, I'll send an email to ask yeah, her. To yeah, get yeah, yeah, totally. But to me, this is like such an epic 
it's it's wow we just discovered this right here and if we hadn't had the king's chamber in this app i mean all these things had to converge exactly yeah. to today i mean that app only got done today it's unbelievable so and clearly it had to be just in time it's like perfectly just in time for this 12 12 which is coming up wow what do you think and tiago today, and today is the seventh right seven twelve twelve this link well, uh, I think we, we had enough signs that uh, we, we are in this grave where we are accessing all this information. And of course, the history of Egypt and all of this uh, would uh, come to astrology and all this mythology. And we are lucky to, to have Robert uh, also here tonight, uh, today, that presented to us. Thank you for all of your study on all of this stuff. I mean... I've, I've spent so much time studying so much other stuff. I never really went to the other non-zodiacal constellations. And the fact that you knew all of that was like freaking unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously. No, so welcome. I mean, the, the book was so timely. Like it came through Lionsgate. I just had to stop everything I was doing. And like I said, I was saying to the other guys, I'm on 144,000 words right now in four months. The book's just been like an explosion of like all of this because I think it's like it's coming in now. It's like now. It's like this is happening now. And so yeah, there's it, the well. If you'd written. like me, if you'd like me to to write an endorsement or the forward or something like that for you, I'd be happy to. Ah, uh, it'd be so good, and I'd love to share obviously the writing because it's it goes into the ancient star law of all of the stories and how it all weaves together and, and obviously all the science and the DNA and, and the hexagrams. So yeah, that, that would be beautiful. And obviously I'd love to share with you the writing. I can, maybe you might want to have some airtime reading about gate 72 in Taurus. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I have a feeling it's very, very relevant. Um, you know, 72 plus the one is the 73. My number is 137. I was born on the 137th day. And it's 137 years until the that hexagram shifts. So yeah, that's what I say. Like it's so all these numbers are just so. And next year the year of the dragon, right? So we're speaking about all these dragons, and next year's the Chinese year of the dragon. So it's like the full Kundalini's. Like it's just it's just coming on board. It's happening. We're definitely getting our DNA upgrades. We're definitely going into magic. We're definitely going into the split. And the other thing I got when I was in Bora Bora was that it was B or A. Bora Bora was B or A, like a choice point, but not a choice point that we make here. It's a choice that we already made. We're going into a different existence. Either we go into love consciousness or we go deeper into judgment consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to um, as well share with you the... Um at some point like the the three rivers the chakra that you can use because with the bee breath because uh maybe that might come in handy in the in the king's chamber yes tell it tell me about it go ahead right now yeah sure okay well the practice is um basically the the whole idea is that the spinoid bone and for those that aren't familiar with the spinoid bone so when you go uh through the bridge of the nose into the back of the like through directly into the back of the head you basically got like uh like a bone that's like a wing and so is it, when most is people... it also called tetrahedral bone oh no i think i've heard this name maybe I, i've not heard that but the official name is a spinoid but most when most people have like these divine visions of illumination and they see angels it's actually because the light in their head they're seeing through their third eye and what they're seeing is they're seeing the wings of the spinoid bone, which encapsulate the pineal gland. And so what you do is that you focus on that point and you do the bee humming, which basically rattles the spinoid bone. And when it rattles, the it's bee stimulates. humming is representing the beehive or the crown chakra. Yeah. And so it's got to it be does, 32, right? Huh? The frequency is probably 432 that does that. The rat, yeah, maybe. I mean, it's they they speak about it. you basically go through like a whole series of different pitches when you're doing it to find the resonance that rattles your own spinoid bone. 
So you'll basically do the humming like low to high and then you'll feel, feel that your whole face is vibrating. That's when you're hitting the sphenoid bone. And then once it starts to rattle, it stimulates the pituitary and pineal to start the alchemical process of working together. And they basically pulse at different beats. And so you've got to get them to like pulse as one beat. Mm, as one. resonating and basically that what happens me, is the three note. rivers. The note that's doing it for me. Mm, like I feel my whole head vibrating from that. Mm, yeah. So that's yeah so exactly so everyone might have a different one where it rattles mm. and then basically you have the three rivers that that converge at that point so you focus like imagine basically the visualization of three rivers coming together into that single point where it's vibrating and that that will basically start to switch on it's called the tri benny chakra the tri veni or the tri benny um, and it basically means it's the ancient Vedic, uh, there's, it's not a very well-known chakra because uh, unless you really study it, like I have with the energy systems, but the, it's the three rivers. So that's what basically activates it. Now you can intensify it by doing the Pratyahara technique, which is closing off the five senses. Do you know this one? Mm -mm. So like when you put your, the, you put your thumbs in the ears and then over the eyes and under the nostrils and then close the mouth. It's like the, the monkeys, hear no evil, see no evil, speak to evil. Yeah. So what you do is you actually close all the five senses. And even better is if you can wrap your tongue. Yes, yeah, so it's thumbs in the ears. You can look it up. It's called Pratyahara. Thumbs in the thumbs ears. In the ears. Index eyes, with the eyes. Nostrils, nostrils with your middle fingers. Uh huh. And then mouth with your third finger, third ring fingers. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. And then basically you you do the the humming as you plug your ears okay and it, and it intensifies it <laughs> robert's having an activation right now whoa that's intense is that, yeah. that's another technique for like to to stimulate this spirit cerebral fluid to go up right to pineal gland yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the, the you, you activate the arc of the covenant of the sphenoid bone, and then you basically that's what activates the the amrita to to come down the spinal fluid. So yeah, but you can practice with it, and um, but it's intense. So yeah, like do it in short bursts for sure. But that's the chakra that you can activate, and uh, I think if you were to do the bee humming in the in the king's chamber, I think. Uh, It'll be interesting to see what happens. I will be doing it. I'll be doing it for sure. Wow, so, I'm so mind fucked right now. I can't even believe it. Okay, so Tatiana, what are your thoughts? There's a lot of information, precious information, Robert. Uh, it's pretty good. Your technology about the astrology is. Uh, subject I don't understand very well, I don't study in my life, but the connection in the King Chamber and the astrology is amazing. I don't know if I see all drawings in our Robert show, but this is good for training my eyes. And it's pretty good. I think it's amazing. Yeah, it does take it takes time to train your eyes. And it's yeah, you, you actually have to see it with your third eye. Yes. It's okay. like encrypted in the fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. So you have to see these. So for me, the first time I walked in the pyramid, I didn't see this stuff. I didn't see any of it. And then I saw the Alpha Omega and because I remembered where it was. I remembered being there when it was put there in the room and I looked down in the sarcophagus and that's exactly where it was. So that I was like, that was weird. Mm -hmm. And then every time I went in and, and it wasn't just me, uh, lots of people on our team found them because they got into a higher frequency. And then they saw like Eden found the Eagle. Susie found the bull. You know, I found the, the, uh, the woman on the, you know, shooting the bow and arrow at the Eagle. 
I found all the stuff on the Ophiuchus wall, right? Mm -hmm. I found the tree and I found the dragons. The dragons I found after I laid in the sarcophagus and I was visited by the angel Metatron. And literally I got out of the sarcophagus and I looked at the wall and it looked like an LED screen that was all in motion. And I saw the scene of this, the path of Orion going through death, resurrection through the Zodiac is the hero's journey. The reason why it's the missing 114th is because it's like looking at the King's Chamber from Leonardo da Vinci's perspective of being an Aquarius. You're looking at it so a knife can't cut itself. Uh, you know, a, a light can't light itself. A fire can't burn itself. An eye can't see itself. So the missing 114th is from the perspective of Orion. And we're going around in the procession of Equinox. And now we're coming to the end of time. So the world is not <laughs> weirder than you imagined. It's weirder than we can imagine. Literally that weird. So Naomi, are you freaked yet or what? Pretty freaked. Um, I don't know. I think it's really cool that the last time that we were in Egypt, um, we were making connections to the flood. And now we're having this these connections to the um to astrology. So I just think it's really cool how all these stories are connected and layered. And I don't know, it's it's mind blowing. It is. So what she's talking about, Robert, is when we were there in Egypt in March, I had all these visions of a big flood coming after the pole during the pole shift. Oh wow. Okay. And the pole shift will be on August 29th, 2029. And it will be on set. There'll be a bunch of solar flares between now and then, and the pole will be starting to move around and everything. But what's really going to trigger it big time is the asteroid Apophysis, which comes on April 13th, Friday the 13th, 2029. So that will said that'll mess up the Earth's magnetic uh magnetosphere. It'll mess up the pole. And everything it's going to put the earth in a very unstable position and and then what i'm seeing is that for three days the earth will stop spinning and then it'll reverse its rotation do we all get younger after that i don't know it sounds like a nice one we gotta look for some positivity in it but there's gonna be like a thousand foot shit. thousand foot wall of water because it's like when you stop a, let's say you stop something going 67,000 miles per hour. It's like, like basically you have a bathtub on the being towed by a car at 67,000 miles an hour. And then it comes to a grinding halt. What happens to all the water? The water gets displaced. And the, the earth's mantle and crust starts to peel up. Like literally separates. So shit's going to get really weird. Now I'm even more sure of it than ever. I was just going to say, Robert, that, that 2029 is a 13 year also. So it's the 13th or the 4th, 30, like 13. So yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Robert, I did your... Um, uh, mm -hmm. I haven't even told you about this, but I do like a whole different modality on top of this that works with like your whole astro. It's like, like the color of astrology. There's like a, a whole way of figuring out like what colors you resonate. And I was going to say, say to you that your name uh, connects to 13, which is the uh, diamond. So it's about your, your life purpose being a diamond, which is just, I thought it was quite funny. <laughs> so there you go. Well, it's, it's this, right? Mm. it's it's uh, you know dolores cannon predicted it she said hidden things are in the walls of the pyramid that no one will see until the right person with the right symbol comes along and the symbol has to match and then they'll be able to see them and use them in our day and then everyone will start seeing it she said that 10 years ago before she died yeah absolutely true absolutely true so we're all just finding our destiny guys 
And it's oh, so beautiful. It's like when you really look back at it, it's like, wow, this is so beautiful. It's amazing. It's amazingly beautiful. Yes. And I feel very honored and very blessed. I share in that too. Appreciate all you guys, all you ladies. I just thought of something. Go ahead. I just thought of one quote from one quote from the Bible, which links to Orion, where it says, Can you loose the bands of Orion? And what's interesting is we've just gone through the band deacon of Pisces, the band that holds the two polarities. So it's like loose the bands of Orion. And can you uh, can you accept the sweet influence of the Pallades? And so I think it's really interesting that we've literally gone through the band of Pisces. We've loosened the bands. We've loosened those boundaries. And we're now moving into this time of being able to actually understand more of time and uh and this whole procession and uh so yeah really really beautiful how it seems to be flowing so potently in this this as you're in this alignment so what's amazing about that is you know in the story of orion orion was chasing after <clears throat> the pleiades the seven sisters right because he want and one of the seven sisters is maya mm -hmm. it's the name of our game right so orion finds maya and maya ends up on the orion platform and now we partner with gaia which is also one of the famous goddesses in the story of orion it's just it's so the metaphors are just like off the hook and so you're it's interesting that you say that he finally learns to accept the Pleiades rather than chase it. Yeah, he evolves for sure. Like it's it's the he's the fusion, oh, right? The the yeah, it's the they're all the same in different stages and then it merges. I mean to me it's like it finishes with Orion. Although you have all futures there, it's like I think that the crowning is like Orion beco like becomes crowned. He finally it, it happens. And uh, the hero's journey, the ultimate hero's journey is always the journey within. It, it's not the, the big victory that, that the hero has. It's how the hero changes that becomes the real story. Yeah, it's the subtlety of purpose that you find. I'm so mind blown right now. I can't even believe it. <laughs> so how are you going to capture a lot of this stuff to lol in our book? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was wondering, like, that I have to put a, a chapter of astronomy for the quadruple to be complete. I didn't have much enough information, but I think that's today, a good point. You're right. I the have next part we were going to do is astronomy, so this is perfectly yeah. timed. Yeah. yeah. So I have to listen to this lecture again and again and extract all the information from the book. It's yeah, I can't so wait for your beautiful. book too, Rob. I, I'm really looking forward to that. What's that? The book? I said, yeah, I can't wait for your book. It's going to be amazing. Oh, man. Dude, you know who's going to love what, all this? It, it, it is. It's a... Who? Uh, First Alan? of all, I'm going to get you a show on Gaia, dude. Yeah. You, you, you deserve your own show. You seriously do. I'm going to get you a show on there. We're with Jason Leggett. He's my producer. He also does uh, Matthias Stefano's show as well as Alan's. And he I introduced Alan sense. to him and got Alan his show. And wow. um, And so I'm going to get you a show. You need a show to tell this story of your book. And it's because it's an important story to be told. I'm on the board of directors of Gaia. Oh, wow. Honestly, like I, it's been so divinely guided I mean, myself in so much of all of this. And the book is really showing that normal people can understand all of this stuff. It's so simple in some, in so many ways that actually once humanity and collective understand this, like we're really going to raise collectively into this view that Leonardo da Vinci had of this last supper. And it's like, it's so, yeah, so beautiful. I, I'm, I super feel very honored by that. And I appreciate you seeing me and uh, all of you guys valuing uh, what I've been doing. Cause it's literally been my whole life doing this, you know, it's like every moment of my day is doing this and bringing this forth and uh, through a lot of sacrifice and dedication of just, uh, 
yeah and um it's going to be a big book though as i said it's up to about 500 pages already <laughs> so it's uh it's a big one but um but yeah so many gems in there and and it's our lost it's our lost star stories of our ascension you know that that's like why this wasn't given to us from birth you know this really as it is as important to our humanity as i think that any other scriptural book is it's like the story of of what we've done already and even though it's in our future we've done it already we already are ascended we already are orion in the stars and we just need to move into that uh ancient future and uh yeah super super blessed to share this so but i appreciate you robert thank you so much for uh, awesome. for this and for all you guys it's um yeah, I think it's a very beautiful time to be alive and doing this work. Um, yeah, deeply honored to be part of this. So amazing. Collective work. So, um, yeah, this is going to be big on 1212, which also to me has a feeling of it's 1212 at 12 o'clock. It's like a 36. It's a squaring circle number <laughs> as well. After 72. Mm -hmm. and um i i feel like this is a story for all of humanity now yeah that's absolutely this is the the real story of humanity which is the illusion the illusion <laughs> the illusion that we created to experience this and have god realization I also tracked the seven Pallades in the in the gates as well. So it, it's so beautiful, like you're saying about Maya and uh, Merope and Steropen. And, uh, it's like I've actually tracked them where they are in the grid, so we can really see like how to connect these uh, as well. And that's why that's what made me find out that Alcyon and Sirius is basically share the same twin in Gemini, the twin central sun. And I think it's so beautiful. Like that's the top of the Christmas tree. It's like the double, it's like the double star right there. No, this is so epic. So um, Merope, by the way, the Merope pyramids, I feel like is related to that. And those are the time philosopher's stone uh, proportion pyramids. So I need to go back and study the story of Merope now again. I've already written it if you want me to send it to you. Yes, I mean please do. Can, what can yeah. you give us a quick synopsis of it? Oh, what Merope. happened with Merope? Man, now you're asking. That's like fourteen thousand. Does it somehow relate to time? Hold on, hold on. I, I'm looking. I'm looking. Let me. Let me. I'm 144,000 words in, so you know, gotta give me a bit, of, <laughs> a bit of grace on this one. Hold on. I'm trying to find. Almost there. Um, Merope. Is she one of the Pleiades? Yeah. Merope is, oh, Merope is the lost. She's in Crux. She's, she's in the Deacon of Crux, uh, Gate 46. Uh, she's the lost Pleiade. Wow. Okay. That's it. That's a the lost pleiade yep yeah hold on let me okay so yeah so so this might i'm just going to read this straight from what i've written so the second line pleiade is merope known as the lost pleiade in the ancient mythology it was merope which means with face turned that was said to have married a mortal king and so hid with shame However, astronomy suggests that the star was hidden due to the brightness of Alcyon, known as the great leader. Like Sirius C, the star could not be seen with the naked eye at the time and only later revealed within the constellation. It is very interesting that this link to shame and the second line in the hexagram is the sacral chakra, where we store the emotion of shame, especially due to sexual relations, desires or fantasies. Perhaps this is why we find Merope in gate 46 under the deacon of Crux, the southern nation. 
She resides in Libra as Venus, the evening star, and the cross represents the sacrifice of our lower nature or in the sacral chakra. However, to follow the myth, may it suggest that what she sacrificed was actually the societal conditioning of what she was meant to do traditionally, which was to marry within the gods and what was deemed acceptable by the gods as she negated what she was told to do and followed her pure desire to be with her beloved, a mortal king. So there you go. That's a, that's a small synopsis on Mero. There's something very deep in there about the shame. Yeah, I mean, there's more, but I, 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 I could read more, but... <laughs> There's something very, very deep in there about that. And it's um, very much related. So she was supposed to marry a god and she ends up marrying a mortal king. Yeah, absolutely. So she basically negated negated what she was meant to do. And in the myths, they talk about her following her lower desires to marry a mortal king. But my interpretation of it when I read it was actually... No, she she got rid of the societal conformities of what she was meant to do, and she was shamed for it, like a lot of you know women have been in the past. Yeah, slut shamed. She she wanted to marry the her beloved, which happened to be immortal. She didn't care, but that's what she was shamed about. And then it was only really when she overcome the shame that then she could be seen, and that's why she was discovered as the lost Pleiade. Hmm. And it's in Libra, which is the scales, right? It's the, it's the, it's not just scales of balance, but the scales of octaves. So it's like she moved into the next scale, like up the octave, and got out of that that societal conditioning, and uh, and so sacrificed the conditioning to to be in love. So that's that's my that's my view on Marope for sure. Okay, well. That was an intense meeting, guys. I have a, a little toast I'd like to play, if I could, to end it. Go ahead. It reminded me of something that Rob just said. You have to turn your sound on, I think. Yeah, I realized. <laughs> One second. I like the mentioning of Libra being scales, as in octaves. And I and then it made me think of it as scalar dimensions because you know Nassim Haramain's unified field theory is a dimension is a scale and it's infinite scales. The multiverse contains universes, which contains superclusters, which contains galaxies. It goes all the way down to the quark and then beyond into the Planck. So like, it's nice to think of Libra as scalar dimensions. That's you know, that's cool. That helps tie some things together for me. Thank you. I like it. Hey guys, I just want to say a quick little toast while we're here at dinner. Here's to the mystery, to the unanswered question that only the emboldened dare ask. For here we are together, and tonight we each hold fire within our grasp. So to that new light, I say onward, I say forward, back into our past. Cheers, everyone. Okay, Jesus! <laughs> Yeah, well so done. Back into our past. Onward, forward, back into our past. Yes, sir. Future is ancient. Yeah, yeah I call it the uh, ancient future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. You know, it's interesting. Somebody just posted in the uh, Orion Beta chat. I'll just show this real quick because I think this is somehow related. All these. So it was you, Will. You You posted this stuff. Yeah, the left energetic it. channel is unbalanced spirituality. The right energetic channel is unbalanced materialism. These two channels are often representative as yin yang, light and dark. The cool color spectrum and the warm color spectrum, each side has many characteristics. The left feminine and the right masculine, the archangel. Gabriel on the left and Michael on the right. In popular culture, this is depicted as the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other. The center channel, the only one that extends all the way to the creator, has the characteristics of neutrality, balance, and harmony. This channel is strongest when it is straight. It is straight when it is informed by the left and right channels. 
So this is the 440 hertz, 444. The yin and yang equally and in harmony, which creates a third form of energy, shen. <laughs> yeah, yin, yin, shen, yang. We are in a high vibrational state and enjoy the clearest communication, the highest fidelity connection, and the greatest experience of the gnosis when we are energetically neutral. This is shen. So not choosing one or the other, but choosing love instead. The left and right channels contain critical information. However, they are also the source of our distractions, legitimate as they may be. Middle way, basically. And there is a large cross placed and centered on the throat, empowering the focus on voice. Yeah, that top image I put up there, I, I named that Orion S. And yeah, that, that was the response from Kevin there, it looks like. So it was perfectly. So yeah, this is our Orion app, Robert. You'll be on it soon. Yeah, it's been, it, it reminds me of this, like I was saying about the spinoid bone and the three rivers chakra. Like, yeah. literally, yep. like what you said. And um, yeah, it, it's just so, yeah, so beautiful how it's so, so coming together. And, uh, but I, I'm super interested to hear how that bee, that bee humming goes, because uh, <laughs> that's, that really is probably one of the, the most powerful methods um like i said it was the three sacred rivers in the vedic tradition um and that chakra is it's yeah if you can start to work with that that's how the masters did it so <laughs> no greater place to do it than in the king's king's chamber yeah. all right guys i gotta run because i'm gonna time for me to go to egypt <laughs>